Hey, we're the last four boys at the foster home. Also, <laughs> no, also known as More Than Culture. Do you have a business or not? Come to the More Than Culture program. And you can place your ad here, right on our show. You can have companies such as... Trim Hedges. Mm. We Pressure, advertise it. Pressure Wash Dryways. We'll advertise it. If you got a soccer game coming soon. We'll advertise it. Hey, even if you cut grass or hell. <laughs> It this ain't is no a budget out of to them. get you to do a commercial. Mm. Solicitation genius. commercial. You should have been said. <laughs> That's a shirt. <laughs> That's a shirt. <laughs> oh man, look at just got followed by Jesus. Boy, hey man, when you do what you're supposed to be doing, stuff come to you. I was nothing a year ago. Then I got a PPP loan piped on them. Started three, four OnlyFans. It's not even my pages. That's not even my body. Doing well right now. So all that shit you was trying to do that you was hating on somebody else's page. Do that shit today, bro. I got a record label that I started this week. We already got a TikTok challenge. We do. I, I don't know it yet because they ain't send it back to me. I told them to send me the video. And they ain't send it back to me. But start your shit. Yeah, we can't be free until they stop selling us. They make so much money and profit off of our culture. And until we take ownership of ourselves and ownership of that intellectual property, we never going to be free because we're too valuable to somebody else. And that's all it's about. Mm. Goaty. It's an adjective, to be the all-time greatest version of yourself. So if I said that you were goaty, I'm saying that your behavior is of or pertaining to goat activity, whatever that may be. So be goaty, greatest of all time you. We on again, I hope you listening closely. We doing our own thing, but we doing this for the culture. Check out the top. Check out the top. Don't be the subject. Don't be the subject. We keep it pop. Hey, we keep it pop. You can be up next. You can be up next. We are more than culture. 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 We are more than culture. More than culture. I'm, yep. I'm in here with all these smokers, right? Uh huh. These smoke. Well, they, they smokers first, then they comedians. <laughs> 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 I'm gonna tell y'all a, a little story about. I, I've never smoked weed before in my life. Oh man, I never, felt like you was gonna say that. Never, but I'm gonna get. Let me tell you the story. So one night, it's about '08. We was in the studio at, at Stonehenge, mm. right next to Stank Only. So you know, like when you go to Patchwork, how they cook the brownies, and they cook the cookies, and some studios cook brownies. So one night, we at the studio. We work with me, Polo, Carrie Hilson was there that night. What? Uh, Gonna be a lot of that. So I'm in the kitchen, right? So somebody had cooked some brownies. So I go, I eat one. I'm like, they pretty good. I ate another one. These are <laughs> but we, we didn't know. I didn't know this at the time. That happened to keep. I'm thinking they're just regular brownies. You ate two. Like two no or one three told of. you. Sheesh. Bro. And never smoked weed before. Oh, <laughs> so check out. So peep game. Peep game. This Boy. is crazy, right? I don't think I ever told nobody this story on camera. So I go back into the room, and uh, Ronnie, you know G Rock. For organization, yes, crazy G Rock. Yeah, yeah. So we're in the studio. G Rock come in the session. He and I, you know how he animated, acting crazy. I'm starting to, I know, I'm starting to feel like something wrong at this point. So I'm like, he jumping around like, man, I wish this dude sit his ass down. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm feeling kind of crazy. I'm like, I, ain't, I can't ask nobody to take me to the doctor. And I get to the doctor, this is <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> so, <laughs> bro, they all, everybody left the studio. I woke up about five o'clock, six o'clock in the morning. Everybody was gone. I'm like, something ain't right, but I can't figure out what it is. I still don't know. Right. So you know, when you drive to the end of the Antoine to the street, you can't make a left because of the train track and they got them things on the street right. on the north side. The old, right oh yeah, right. So you got to drive yeah. around the block by the car wash. Mm -hmm. right. So I drove around the block by the car wash, bro. To this day, I don't know how long I sit at that light. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I think I was at the life about 45 minutes Ooh. So when I woke up When I woke up <laughs> When I woke up I was like 
I'm about to shake this off so I can make it to the crib. I live about 30 miles from there. Mm -hmm. So I said, all right. I went across, I made the left, went across 75, got on the freeway. After I passed Pace the Ferry, I don't remember nothing after that. What? <laughs> I get home. <laughs> I get home. Like, it's like 6, 7 o'clock in the morning. I get home, go to sleep, wake up by 3 o'clock. Then I'm, I'm feeling cool. So then get back to the studio that night. They're like, hey, man, <laughs> you ate some damn brownies. <laughs> <laughs> Three of them, man. Yeah, you. Yeah. But they were like before the elbows, before they had got popular. Right. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, mm -hmm. this was like 07. Your heart was beating fast? 07, 08. I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> he lost time. He ain't make you want to smoke. You got some good. I'm sure that was the best sleep you done had in a minute. No, I, I ain't going to do, just go do a whole lot of work. I'm going to go to sleep. This was this big Greater Street, right? This when you were a little bigger, too, huh? Did you, did you nah. knock out? Uh, I, was about, I was about 195, 200. Oh, you. <laughs> three yeah. brownies. Three brownies. Oh, three brownies, three brownies is a lot. That's yeah, gonna yeah. put you down. Jesus. Nigga, tongue will fall out. Glad you're here. Glad you made it, nigga. <laughs> he said I, I passed Pilot Fair. I don't remember right. shit. What? After I passed Pilot Fair, that's a busy highway. I don't remember nothing else. Yeah, you out there messing with them good twelve out there too, Pacers Ferry. Now past Pacers Ferry, I was going to East Cobb to like oh, at the edge of Cherokee. Even worse. Cherokee Cobb and Fulton. They got SUVs out there, even worse. But they got you know when the police got SUVs, they are racist. Yeah. <laughs> and they got a, a high boosted fade, like a white man with a fade. No, it, it's like, any white man it's, like fade. No, it's like at night. When you get when anybody get behind you at night in a dark colored vehicle with a rack on top, you think it's the police. It's the police, man. <laughs> sure. Especially out here in the South, man. Y'all niggas be with them super police car, bro, with the rims, with the, the actual police car with the light on the yeah, side. Dude, How you, you let y'all niggas do that? And yeah, they, be they, they buy them at auction. auction. But they don't take the light off the side? Uh, man, take that light off the side, bro. They scrape police They got challenges now. They don't they need them light. They can put them lights on. They got the challenges now. Yeah, I'm just, well, I'm just saying, like, back no, in the day. They don't want them all yeah, back in the day, though, was shit. Like, yeah, nigga was first driving, like, in college when I first went to South Carolina. The new Carolina. Atlanta thugs are very fuel efficient. They say to me, they, they dumping out of Priuses now. You nah, know, they ain't fuel efficient. They ain't charging the Hellcats. Yeah. Charging the Hellcats. It's some niggas with some I felt so money. old the other day. I met, uh, uh, what was that? Oh, Desi's comedy show a while back. And uh, niggas was outside. He had a dude that came to rap, and I can't think of his name. But I saw him that pretty. Oh, what's the nigga name? Uh, Nardo. Yeah, that song. He got uh. What the fuck is that? Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. What the fuck is that? Do do do. But this is for niggas knew him like. So I'm at the show and shit, and he outside. He got his homeboys, his car parked in front of mine, smoking, looking down at it. I'm like, hey dog, you <clears throat> probably need to get some new tires. He's like, oh no, nah, I'll be running that hole. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, nah, I never want to call it running that hole. Because you know the niggas be you know hitting donuts and staring and all of that shit. I just felt old. I was like, oh yeah, 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 I know what you mean. You, <laughs> <laughs> you know, youth is wasted on the young man. They, they these niggas are obsessed with like. Yeah, nah, nigga got bread. He got a few cars. Fuck it, running that shit. Why you young? Because when you get like us, you're not gonna do it. Run it up. Yeah, you're like, man, my insurance ain't gonna cover this. Right, right. Yeah, you're not gonna do it. Because when you get like us, you're not gonna do it. Run it up. You're like, man, my insurance premium is gonna be high. Yeah, man. Now you gotta have fun when you're young, man. Just like good, responsible. Fun. Oh. All right. <laughs> I'll never understand some things, and some things right, ain't meant to be sure. understood. Right. You know what I'm saying? God is good. This is what you're God is good. God that's is how good. you got. That's how you All keep from having anxiety and worrying about shit. Is being like, hey, you know what? Some shit I ain't gonna understand. Some, some shit. shit I cannot do. A lot of motherfuckers be like, you could do anything. Some hey, stuff you gonna overstand. Overstand. Sometimes yeah. motherfuckers be like, you can do anything. You cannot. You cannot. Do anything, <laughs> but it's anything. a whole bunch you of shit you something. can do. You can just do something. Do something. You feel me? What about the people on your Everybody TikTok? They be trying to do everything. Who? Oh, uh. all your jokes. Talking about them half bodies. Uh. <laughs> Y'all gotta follow Tyler Chronicles on TikTok. There you man. go. Talk my there shit. There you go. Y'all gotta follow him on TikTok. Yeah, I'm about to get off there, man, because they be. Like they be marking, you gotta go my, back to the marking my videos, man. You gotta go back to the minister. Trap man. minister, yeah, yeah. You gotta have a, a thing. You, you gotta, gotta have go a back thing. To the minister, goddamn. Trap minister, guy. Turn, <laughs> yeah, turn, yeah, yeah. turn, turn your turn your Bible to goddamn <laughs> goddamn <laughs> Cap you know what I'm Cap yeah, yeah. They had put it on a uh, boss. Was, was it boss? Was it? Uh, I don't idea. know. One of them reposted it. I don't know. What's up, Remo? It's six o'clock. Hey, volume one. Uh oh. Hey. Greg Street. <laughs> if I practice in the car, was a person. Right. <laughs> 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 Cee Lo Green. 
Fuck you mean, bro. This is the board of the culture show. CeeLo Green. Secret Genius. Remo Rod. Tyler Chronicles. Ronnie Jordan. Let's get it. We here, man. We, we, we introduced by the people who knew the person the longest. I started going up to the radio station very early. Uh, Ryan Cameron and I, I, I met him along the way. I met this legend. Along the way, then you know how you know somebody, and then you find out more about their legend in, the, in real time. So I'm like, how the fuck? Like I'm looking at the Outcast doc, and they just like, man, we had to run it by street and Everything. see. What, I'm like, Outcast had to see what he ran it about. by street, run it by street and mm-hmm. see what he thought. And then we, we that's one world. He's he's a fish not on the sneaker world, like mm-hmm. the, the the designers and all these other people. They have to give their sneakers, they preps, they new shit to him. Mm-hmm. And Some, then, a few, just a, a few. few. Yeah, no, he done broke records. Like More than me. one of my favorite hood <laughs> records is uh, <laughs> "Take That Shit to Try Try Time." Hey, let's go. It was on his album, man. Mm-hmm. He broke it in Atlanta. One of the first motherfuckers to book Master P in Georgia. This is hey, one of the first right. motherfucking OGs that I met, and he's a legend. <laughs> Give it up for Greg Street. We got Greg Street yes. on Boy and Culture. God damn. Yeah, bitch. Yeah, bitch. You what you got said. You. Mm-hmm. God damn, Greg Street. We here. Yes, we sir. Here, man. So how do you? Uh, how does Outkast say, "Yo, Street, listen to this shit"? Like, how did you meet I, them? What's? I actually met Outkast before I ever moved to Atlanta. Mm. Oh, like wow. I was in Dallas. Yeah. On the radio, like me and Pimp C and other people, like we like, man, these boys gonna be big. So like, I started. I reached out to, uh, you know, it, was before, it wasn't no internet. Yeah. So it was like, me and Rico, I finally got, got in touch with Rico. We started talking and just chopping it up, just talking about different stuff. But, um, like, I had Outkast so big in Dallas before they was even rocking Outkast in Atlanta. Wow. First single Hold on. So I was wow. popping in Dallas before? For before Atlanta. Atlanta. Wow. Uh, message. That's exclusive. Hold on. I ain't never, never, that. never that's heard that shit. I've never, never heard that. But you got to yeah. think, I, Atlanta Atlanta was on all the booty shake music when I came from. Right. Right. So it's like, they wasn't even really ready. For, they wasn't, they, I mean, they. I'm not going to say they weren't ready for it, but they, it wasn't like, you got to remember Players Ball is a Christmas song that came out on a LaFace Christmas, Christmas compilation. Christmas it was like the last song on the compilation, so people never really, really paid attention to it. Yeah. And, but when we we heard it in Texas, you know, when you listen to Scarface and UGK and all that stuff, you can kind of relate to what Outkast was because they was like the next level of what they was doing. Right. So, you know, bringing them to Dallas to the Bomb Factory and all that stuff. Man. Man. Wow. That's Shit. I ain't gonna jump ahead. Then we gonna go back. I got beef with street, cuz. Oh, no. <laughs> Everybody. You know I got beef. You got to make sure it's well done. Cause let me tell you. <laughs> go street ahead. was here rocking hard as shit. Mm-hmm. Okay. Young man. Greg Street, 6 o'clock. You know you got to turn that shit on. Mm-hmm. Then he went back to Dallas. He did. Mm-hmm. You had and I, I was mad. I'm like, it's off. like, you, you know, when you lose your yeah. stepdad. <laughs> you had, you had, had Atlanta fucked up, then. Like, what Come on, do? man. Nigga, like, what had Atlanta do? fucked what up. I was here on the weekend. I came on oh, Saturday. Man, come on. Ain't nobody on the radio Saturday, niggas man. Was, niggas was hitting play and record. Fuck you, uh, man. Yeah. I'm going to tell you a crazy story. I'm going to tell you a crazy story about that. Talk about Um, Derek Dow, everybody think T.I. Uncle, but really Derek is T.I. Uncle, was T.I. Uncle's best friend. Derek and Quint, Derek and Quint, and yeah, Derek and Quint was cool. And um, one night we was at we was at um, Crucial, and Derek had told me previously this little story before that, before this night. He was like, "Bro, let me tell you something that you probably never heard nobody tell." He said, "Bro, people in prison have done a whole bid with you." He said, "Bro, when you left Atlanta, <laughs> yeah, that's he said when you left Atlanta and went back to Dallas, boy, he said, bro, they were mad as hell." He said because in prison, like. You know, in prison, all during the day, some, you might let somebody use your radio. Mm-hmm. Be like, when it comes 5, 6 o'clock, 30, 6 o'clock hey, yeah. hey, man, hey, bro, hey, man, hey, 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 tell the war. Hey, man, tell uh, Johnson, give me my walk, man. This nigga, Petey so, Green. So one night, <laughs> so, so no so no lie, check this out. So one night, we was in the club. One night, we in the club, Tyler. Yeah. And this dude came through the, like, we'd be in the back, in the kitchen. Like, when you walk through the kitchen to the office to the coolers. Boom. So, it's a, a freezer in the hallway. So, I be sitting Talking to the mic for us? I be sitting up on the, sitting up on the freezer. Mm-hmm. So, dude comes through the door. Derek look at the dude. He look at me. And it's like months, 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 months after he had told me the story. So, he look at dude and look at me. I'm like, what's wrong with this nigga? <laughs> so, he said, he looked at the dude. He said, hey, you know who that is? I'm like, he was like, No. He's like, that's Greg Street. Like, what? He's <laughs> like, bro, I just Man, did 20 weird. years with you, Shotty. Like, wow. Yeah. Damn, yeah. Was you brought me up. He's like, bro, you brought me. He said, I told you. Wow. He was like, bro, 
Ooh, man, you was probably Point. putting numbers on niggas' sentences then when you left, though, because motherfucker probably was stabbing niggas, Boy, getting yeah, three yeah. extras, like, fucking with you. Especially that, that first, that what? first, when that first six o'clock hit. First six o'clock with that new nigga? Right. <laughs> <laughs> new hey, who, niggas hold on, hold on. get niggas who, stabbed who, 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 up. Somebody got fucked up. Toss Wade. Oh, Toss Wade. Oh, Toss Wade was getting niggas murdered, but that's what they did. I was coming up there then. I was up there a lot. Toss was cool. He did all right. I mean, but he ain't street. Yeah, nah, that's a lot to follow, man. That's tough. It's tough. He ain't got no toy drive. Niggas grew up with great. <laughs> he ain't got no toy <laughs> He ain't got no niggas yeah. in the NFL play Little League football. Oh, man. Talk about that, man. You, you got some, y'all got some athletes that you've been had since they was little boys. They Hall of Famers now. And, oh, yeah, Ant Man. Come on, one man. One of the newer ones. Ant Man. Ant Man going one. crazy. He's one of my favorite players in the league right now, Bro. man. And he talked that real Atlanta shit. Yeah, he going I'm, I'm going to show you. I got a video on my phone. We was doing a Chris Brown concert. Ant Man came up. It got some tickets. Mm -hmm. Oh, you coming to the show. How old was it? He, he was probably in the 10th grade by then. Oh, okay, yeah. Oh, but he played, but he played, we see a lot of people don't know, Ant-Man played football. He looked like it, though. He, he looked like a football he, he was a superstar football player. Yeah. And then they took him from, they took him from, from Camerton Road to Holy to Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then he, he, he just started, started playing basketball since yeah. he's about in the 19th They did the right thing, bro, because that football yeah. shit tough. Yeah. 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 All right. That CTE is That CTE is not with I'm, you. I'm, I'm, I'm about to stir the pot dead, real right? quick. Yeah, right, who, man, Mo who has you got to stir the pot jeans the, <laughs> the these these are very <laughs> club jeans crucial were in the pot when it was you feel me that's why they fucked up the jeans <laughs> <one. laughs> hey, that's, that's them that's your ass Mr. Postman <laughs> <laughs> you feel me you see these dog beat me in my ass son <laughs> did it Stinking hurt that dog did it hurt <laughs> <laughs> alright stir the pot alright so stir the pot who has the best Atlanta spirit north side west side east side or south side Boy, you trying to throw me in Come there. Come on, bro. Now, you all stirring the pot. Yeah. Jeez. Like, trying to throw him yeah. in there. Yeah, he be at every side. Who has the best? <laughs> he got a club spirit. at every side. Niggas had their arrows, though. Oh, how about that? That's a better question. Oh, no. Nah, hell no. Nah. We're taking them to the streets. <laughs> Who has the best? Sorry. <laughs> See, this, this is what you got to understand about Atlanta. Talk. Atlanta's one of those cities to where everything can be turned up at the same time. Right. You know, okay. like you go to some cities, if some popping on the west side, everybody on the it's west side. With, yeah. You right. go to the south side, everybody on the south side. Atlanta's one of those cities where it could be going down on Keller Road or Memorial Drive, and it could be going down on, on Bankhead, or it could be going down in Marietta, it could be going down in Gwinnett, it could be doing, going down in College Park. Crazy. It could be going it could be doing, going down in College Park. And then you gotta think Clayco got size now. It's a whole Hold on, it's Clayco size. Clayco like got size now. So it's North Clayco, you got, South Clayco. You got, you got the old National Clayco. Yep. Then you got the um, Clayton the County South for Fulton everybody Clayco. that ain't in Atlanta. Then you got the, the, the other side of Clayco, like Morrow Clayco. Jonesboro. 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 Country Clayco. Mm -hmm. so that's how I'm from. That's how yeah. I'm from. That's from the Forest Park wild. and all that. that that's that's where your real dog would be trying to get you a house and hey, ma'am, I'm not fucking going tomorrow. And then you got that. Stop sending that email to me that say Morrow on it. Yeah, Riverdale, Jonesboro. That's what. And Riverdale, Jonesboro, and all that. Hampton and all that. It's like it's like Clayco. Shout out to Love wow. Joy High School, man. Thomas Road. You know, hey, let me tell you something. He media trained because he got all that. Well, yeah. Who the best shit it's, it's out kinda, of there? It's kinda, yeah. then, then, <laughs> then, you know, you can't count the deck out. You better not. Side. Come on, man. Deck, East side, niggas. But then the deck, like, but then the deck, you got Keller Road. Then Keller Road is the suburb. Well, Columbia Drive is the suburb to Keller Road. Keller Road you right. And okay. then, and then Redan and all that <laughs> is the <laughs> suburb uh, to Columbia Drive. Then you got. South Deshaun and Rockbridge and all that. You know what I'm saying? Y'all like y'all like LA, nigga. You could be two backyards over, and niggas be like, "Where you from?" Like, hold on, nigga, I'm from two streets over, nigga. That ain't over here. I ain't San Bernardino. <laughs> yeah, nigga, we over here. Crazy. Man. Every two blocks is somebody new. You better stop walking. Same now. thing with Bankhead. Bankhead got you know Hollywood Court say it must be three side. <laughs> three. Side? Bankhead go all the way to West Georgia while you playing. Like, all you, the way to West Georgia. All the way. <laughs> and we used to take all the way to school. All the way to school. Yeah. Way to school. Oh, you talking about past Blue yeah. Flame? I ain't never been past yeah, you that. Go oh, yeah. oh, that's how we used to get to school. I went to West Bankhead Georgia. Bankhead go to Alabama. One six. No yeah, shit. All the way. way. We, we used to take it to Alabama. Bankhead Huntsville. go all the way to Alabama. That's, that's the smoker road. If you yeah. smoke and ride, for to go to Birmingham, you ride that back way. Then jump on twenty way down. Damn, every road that's been here since the eighteen hundreds, I think, go to Alabama. Every road is a green road. You had to get your ass up and down here, boy. How did you get your name? It's an interesting story. Um, Good question. <laughs> when I... I'm from I'm from Hattiesburg. Hold on, before you answer, I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> Had to fuck up your good you're question. Right? It's, it's, a, it's, a kind of, it's a crazy question. I'll, I'm from Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Okay, okay, Hattiesburg in the building. Hattiesburg. Goddamn casino area, right? 
that's, 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 that's 60 miles away. Like the oh, coast. damn, North never mind. Luxie, that's right. where, big, that's that's where church hats come from. Comedian Wody Hattiesburg. There, <laughs> church Hattiesburg. <laughs> and that, Stupid, bro. <laughs> and when I moved, I moved, I worked in Hattiesburg, then I worked in Mobile. When I moved from Mobile to Dallas, to Houston, my name was Gregory KP, and they had a dude at the station that mixed his name was RP. So an old white guy by the name of Monty Lane, he was the former general manager of the station, but he had retired and became like the consultant, but he was responsible for a lot of legendary radio stations like WJM in Detroit, Magic 102 in Houston, mm -hmm. uh, the Magic Station in St. Louis, mm -hmm. all those were his stations. So WKRP like, in Cincinnati? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that one too. They were they weren't they weren't jamming. <laughs> they, was not jamming. <laughs> they was not jamming. They were not jamming. They were not jamming. jamming. <laughs> they were jamming at all. <laughs> but That's funny as hell. He actually came up with the name, kinda, sorta, but he wanted to call me MC Street because back mm. then a lot of radio stations was naming their DJs after rappers. Okay. And I was like, I ain't no, you know, you had like MC Jammer and Al Be Bad, mm. and I was like. You know, that's like rapper, so I just use my name, Greg, and put that with the streets. That's, that's hard. hard. Better tell that white man no. Yeah, man. <laughs> Trying to name me. My you know name is saying? Kunta. <laughs> Did you, uh, there ain't no that damn Toby. I, I'm, I'm good friends <laughs> with B-Rock from B-Rock uh, B and the Biz, my baby dad. Oh, he's yeah. from Mobile. Yeah, he said y'all went to high school together, man. Or middle nah. I was in school together. Or I, I probably uh, went to his school when he was in school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said yeah. Oh, you just went up there. You was yeah, just see, up. my mama from Mobile. I'm not. I'm not from. He from Mobile. Oh yeah. He uh, said he remember seeing you in school, like yeah, around. Yeah, there. Well, coming to the school. He was in school. I, I'm not from Mobile. My mother's from Mobile. Okay. And my dad is from Lucidale, which is like 30 minutes away. So we all, all my cousins and aunties and everybody was in Mobile. So I used to come there all the time. So when I got a job there on the radio, you know, BLX and Mobile is one of the biggest stations on the coast. That's what it was up. like. Well, he'd have made it. A lot of these yeah. people got radio roots, man. A lot of people entertainment got radio roots. What's your first pair of sneakers that you just had to have, like? And then you kept on ice, like you had to get another pair. And them Converse, um, when they came out with the Dr. J's, man. I wore them Dr. Converse. J's come out, and they didn't even sell them in the stores. Mm -hmm. You had to go to the sporting goods stores to get them. Oh, like damn. When you, oh, when you bought hard. your baseball uniform. With the, just the star on the side, yeah. Yeah. plain the white, white leather. with the blue. In the basketball section. You had to go, you had to, go to Now, it was in the shoe section, yeah. but you had to oh. go to, like, a sporting goods <laughs> store. I thought you had to get him like buy the basketballs. Yeah. <laughs> balls. <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna be back there by the balls. They're back about balls, basketballs, man. man. Yeah, After yeah, that, yeah. That, that, that nigga shit. Yeah, in the back, man. Go on here. After that, it was like the Jordan threes was, the, mm. was like one of the first big ones. P people in the, in the in the original days really didn't rock the Jordan ones. Mm. Nor the two. The, the Jordans didn't blow up until the threes came out. Man, remember Hold Easy? On now. Remember Easy had them on on that cover. I remember the Doc had them on that or formed that video. I was like. No, but, he's, but he's, he had them on before he had, DOC. He had the white ones? He had the on the radio cover. Yeah, the blue with the blue sweatsuit. The, no, he had the white sweatsuit on. Oh, oh, sweatsuit. Oh, he's talking to oh, new face. Memory, y'all. I'm off. I still memory got my Niggas having the shoe on. <laughs> no, I shoe memory off. <laughs> yeah, I was, like, shoe memory I was like five. <laughs> I was like five. <laughs> <laughs> I think I remember shit. I don't know. I was eating. <laughs> I was eating. <laughs> I was five, man. Shit. That's all I was doing. Oh, we eat steak and shit. Man. Hell yeah. <laughs> I was eating steak and shit. <laughs> like five. Hey, so, so what was did you say what would you say was the hmm, maybe this will stir the pot too. Uh -oh. I got stir the pot can uh, cargoes. So look, what do you think would be the mm, best yeah, let's go with that. Best era in Atlanta music. Oh the best era for Atlanta? Atlanta music, yeah. Uh, oh, you found hold on, you found the easy E Jones. Yeah, we're trying to just find the picture, though. Hold on. Go ahead. Go ahead. The best era for Atlanta music? I mean, it really just depends on what era you grew up in. Because Atlanta mm. had so many eras. Boy, Black boy, true. white boy swag. Black that was your, that was your best one? your favorite era, bro? Hey, this is how I <laughs> keep it. Yeah, Andro. Ooh. Yo, she was probably still in the Feel the Fresh crew when that came out. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wow. Atlanta has gone through at least five lives. Atlanta been had the, the music game. The crazy music. for a long time like you gotta think even before it became mainstream like i, I never came to atlanta until i moved here but when you but i know the history of the music like right. d-rock and success and effect because i was working in the record store when i was a kid so i used to buy all the records um when, J, when jd had silk time leather yeah and then he had d-rock and then you had and then kilo came out when i left mobile in 1990 and went to houston a guy named Jam and Jimmy came to uh, to the radio station. He actually worked for Ichiban. Ichiban had Kilo, so Kilo was big down there after I left. 
but he didn't come out like the after I left. But that that was a whole era. Raheem the Dream, mm-hmm. Kilo. So this is a personal question from my question is personal. MC like, Shadi. What does Greg Streets think? What does Greg Street think is the best era for Atlanta music? Personal opinion. I would I probably run through the whole like little face little face era. You know what I'm saying? If you're looking at the the so, magnitude yeah. of how big it was. Yeah, the quality yeah. of music. Because if you I don't know if you saw the podcast I did with LA Reed, he told me the whole stories of how he had an artist named Damian Dane. And um he went to New York or LA to a showcase and he thought Damian Dane was just the shit. And and Clive they sitting in a they sitting in a, a, a audition or a showcase and he was like, Man, when you gonna push the button on Damian Dane? He's like, push the button, what does that mean? Push the button. <laughs> so he said, um, you gotta watch the podcast. He says, um, Watch this next act. And then the guy on stage said, ladies and gentlemen, Whitney Houston. Whitney Houston came and performed. L.A. Reid was like, and then and, uh, he said, Clive Davis said, is, is that Damien Dane? <laughs> 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 Whitney Houston? Yeah. Face. He said, no, he's he not. Said, obviously, but nigga. Said, but, but then he said, but then he said <laughs> straight drop. L.A. said, he said, I got back on the plane. I flew home. The next week after I flew home, um, who did he say first? Somebody came to him with TLC. Wow. t Boz and Left Eye was in the group at first, and they, they put Chili in the group. I think right. somebody uh, somebody with, that was down with Pebbles mm-hmm. knew Chili. They put her in the group. Then he said a week after that, somebody came to him with a 14-year-old boy named Usher. Oh, man. Wow. Then he said a week after that. Stop playing. I'm, I, go watch the oh, video. We can watch it. Then he said three a week, week span. Then, oh, yeah. He said the week after that, say, Rico, Witt, Rico <laughs> Wade came in with these boys named Outkast. Yeah. Three right. weeks in a row. Then he said a week Can't after that. That month oh, changed. Three right. legends in a row. Then he said a week after that. And Tony I might Press. be getting the order a little mixed up. But he, nah, then he said, good. But then he yeah. said the week after that, <laughs> the, week, the week after that, a guy come to them with a group called the Braxtons. So he said they in the auditions, right? They in the wow. auditions, the Braxtons auditioning. So after they get to auditioning, Tony was on the piano, just playing the piano freestyling and just, you know what I'm saying, just improvising. Star. Right, Baby showing Face, off. Baby, he he said yeah. Babyface looked at him. They looked at each other like, <laughs> That'll do it. That's her. And then he's like, in less yeah. than a five or six week period, I had the whole roster. Wow. Oh, he said, Tony, go fire your sister. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tell him you are not one of them. Back about 15 years. We're going to pull back up on them. Tell but then, the but then you, are you not one of them. But then you can't erase, you can't erase the, 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 uh, the era of Atlanta when Jermaine and Dallas was doing their thing before oh, L.A. Yeah. Reed and even moved here. That's why I had the third pot. Come on, now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Chris yeah. Cross, man. That was a hell of an era, too. Chris Cross was huge. Lot, the Chris Cross was huge in L.A. That was my age group. I was, was like, Chris yeah. Cross was yeah. huge in L.A. When they went on the Living Color, the whole school came to oh, school man. backwards, and they were sending niggas to the office school. Get your ass out of this school. My mom with my ass. Get your ass. If you didn't see that episode of In Living Color, that whole school year was trash. trash. It was a waste of school year. I remember my mom with my ass. <laughs> it was like COVID. The pants on back was like COVID. You know, you know who, who killed him that day? Uh, DJ Uncle Brother Dwight, he was my quarterback. We was in the same class. He had the real jersey they had on. We were like, Ooh, we killed him today. The jersey. He he killed killed with the Bruce Smiths and everything. He, he, yeah, I'm going to tell, 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 tell you how big Chris Cross was. I didn't know this until I moved to Atlanta because I had already met him. They had the intros for my show, and I met Jermaine, met the group. But when I moved to Atlanta, I knew Jermaine. I had already knew Jermaine because I met him when I was in Texas. So we used to, me and my homeboy used to go to his house sometimes. So they had, these, he had these books. The people forgot Jermaine, I mean, Chris Cross toured with Michael Jackson. That's what yes. I mean. But even bigger than that, before all this Dubai shit came bigger about. Right, nigga, bigger than the king of pop. So also Jesus had. <laughs> right, like he's the first nigga that made it. Did you ever, did you ever watch that, that news story about the dude from, from that country called Brunei? Yeah, when they were talking about people who come see the Prince of Bernard. There's the richest person, richest the, nigga in the world. He used time. to concerts. Chris Cross yeah. perform. What? Chris Cross perform at the uh, two camels. <laughs> at the the little, he, like he, they had a son, not the one who had the jet that flew the girls to the from the pageant to the to Atlanta for the Olympics. That that's the same guy. That's the same oh, daddy. Oh, you give oh, them people, the, people in the comments right. about to Google all this shit. <laughs> yeah. 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 The yeah. son, the the man, the man from Brunei. He had, I think, he had a daughter and two sons. So Chris Cross performed at the boy's 16th birthday. Mm-hmm. Bro, if you see these pictures, they say like the little boy had like 275 cars. Like he had a parking dick. He had a whole parking yeah, dick. They say what no? They say what no car? What no car in the parking dick? Like under a Ferrari or a Lamborghini or something like that. He would go into the parking dick and tell the man like, "Hey man, 
bring down number 35, number 116, yeah. and number 234. And they be coming out the garage. <laughs> I know the man was pissed. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> like, I need more men. They got to get four cars at a time. <laughs> Fuck you, little yeah. boy. Yeah, you you put all these man, cars. But that's how, more that's how, one, nigga. That's how, <laughs> that's how big Criss Cross was. Criss Cross. Wow. Was crazy. The, the little boy's 16th birthday, they had Criss Cross and Earth, Wind & Fire perform. On the back, on the back, Chris Cross. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> an earth, wind, and fire. One of them was for the daddy. jump, jump, and, and reason for the mom. <laughs> the reasons why you jump, jump. <laughs> Who went first? Who was the headliner? headliner? Chris Cross headline. Who was the headliner? <laughs> <laughs> He was like, all right, Dad, get your, get your, get your band out of here, Daddy. Get your band out of here. Thank you. Verdine, oh, thank you so much, Verdine. Oh thank you. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. Man. Yeah, so that, Damn, that was true. a hell of an error, too. Oh, do, yeah. That was a crazy error. Then yeah. Dallas had Illegal. Then he had did the Monica Project. He had did the Boys of Men Project. That's the boys had their head shaved. They used to wear the shades yeah. and stuff. Uh, um, your, your, boy, your, boy son, your boy brother. Oh, you talking about Illegal? Illegal, yeah. Yeah, yeah Jamal and... Uh, That's Rap City, bro. So do you think they had more of an effect than the trap music era of Atlanta? Then that's another whole era. You know, with T.I. Like and that, Jeezy too, and Gucci, Gucci Man and all that. Yeah. So it's like, it's hard to like just kind of evaluate it because it all just means so much to the Atlanta culture. Atlanta so many of crazy Atlanta. eras that really changed the world. Yeah. Like all them joints you just named, the trap era, shit, uh, the lean era. Uh, well, the lean era was Texas. Yeah, yeah true, I get him that. I get him that. Yeah, lean. Uh, yeah. Snap, 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 music. snap music yeah. era, changed the world, all that shit, man. How I mean, was it when it was the Shawty Low versus T.I. Wars? Where, mm. Like when they was trying to come to the radio, you know, they was making them DVDs. Mm -hmm. And how do you avoid like getting in the mess of the shit? Because they always. Shawty Low was my boy, right? T.I. was my boy. So that, that was during the time when I was flying back and forth from Dallas to Atlanta. Right. So Shawty Low came to V103 one Saturday. And he had the They Know song with just one verse on it. And when I listened to it, I was like, boy, this shit crazy. Mm -hmm. I cleaned it up and played it on the radio that day. He didn't even bring it to the radio for me to play. He brought it to the radio station for <laughs> me to listen to it because he wanted T.I. on the second verse. No oh, shit. Man. So he knew stop He knew me and Derek. And you know, Charlotte Lowe and Derek from Club Crucial real tight, too. So he knew that me and, T me and Derek was the two people that could make it happen if it was going to happen. And that's what really crunk up the whole whoop-de-woo. Because he, he, he didn't want to do it. Before that, but when I heard it, two sides when I, yeah, oh, it was, because it came out without him getting the He never did, he, 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 never did, did he never did do the verse. Mm -hmm. You had to run that bitch back then. Well, it was already out by then, though. No, no, no. <laughs> no. Oh, you just played it, though. I played it with the well, one Well, it was person. out, Great Street. It, no, it wasn't out. <laughs> so you the Bruh, nigga. If you played it. <laughs> <laughs> you the one that started the It hit. was out. But it wasn't out. His whole thing was he wanted T.I. on that second verse. No, I understand. So but if you <laughs> that shit, <laughs> No, that's what crunk it up. Right? That's how it works in Atlanta. Yeah, no, I know I ain't from here. But like if Greg Street play a song, that shit out, ain't it? Oh, oh yeah, out. they just record that shit. They it's up in the That motherfucker was always gone. gone. <laughs> they had that bitch on campus and roll. I wish I, 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 wish I still had the tape of it. They had that motherfucker at flea market. Out one verse, out. That night, they had that bitch at all the flea markets. Like, nigga, this shot. Oh, yeah, they do do that. I mean, when I put I put uh, Andre 3000 on the remix to Jay-Z's um, 30 song, and it was supposed to be for my album. And DJ Drummer fucked around and got it and put it on all the mixtapes. New York. <laughs> oh, no, he put it down out here? Or we just it was on, on the mixtapes? Mix he put it on the mixtapes. Oh, 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 I don't know why I'm thinking Envy. You said drama. Jesus Christ. All right. God. I'm like, bro, you didn't kill my remix. <laughs> you killed, killed it. Oh, hey, what's, what's, what's DJ etiquette? Like, you know, if you. Hold on. I, we, was you fin I'm sorry. I'm no, sorry. go ahead. Was no, you finished the T.I. Shouty Low situation? I mean, right? that was pretty much it. That was the beginning okay. of it. You know what I'm Got saying? It, it was, that was the beginning of the beef? Yeah, he started it. Of whatever the beef was. It really wasn't. A, it really <laughs> never was a beef beef. Copy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, he got like he want to be seen. It really <laughs> wasn't the founder. Like, you know, my tip came out with the whole you barking at the moon. And I'm like, Shouty Low, you done blew up now, man. You might well leave that alone. Yeah. Like, we was in D.C. Me, Swamp Izzo. Shawty Lowe, Johnny Cabell, we was in GC Johnny. doing Johnny. birthday bash for PGC. And we was all in the truck together. I was like, man, you need to let that go. Right. I mean, you you got three Go big on. records. You had Dun Dun, They Know, and there was another See, one was album that was going crazy. Uh, you know, Taffy Taffy. He was, he was, he was sitting down for a Yeah, he was sitting down for a bit. He really couldn't. It's, wasn't it right before when he had to go back? That was a minute after that when we went back. Well, how you felt when you first heard that first? Bam, 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 bam. Who? That's what I'm telling you. He brought, dun, dun, I'm saying, he brought it you, to the station. He Bro, I went, and, I went, and, I went <laughs> and found the producer to see if he had anything else that was jamming like that. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> you about to sign him. He didn't, I just wanted some beats. I didn't yeah. want to sign him. I just wanted some like, beats. He didn't have nothing else like that. Who was the producer? I can't even remember. God, <laughs> we got to find who produced it. Was, it, was it, was a guy, it was a guy that Barney Mac knew. 
It was a guy that Barney Mac knew from, from D4L. The, the, the DJ and the producer from D4L knew him. Man, so how did you pick this song? That, that, that trial time was one of the hardest songs ever. You And I remember you playing it on the radio like over, and I was like, this shit is silly, but it is jamming like a motherfucker. Actually, what happened when I was in Mobile working at BLX, Mr. Big used to come perform at the showcases, at the clubs. So I, I already had knew of him, and a lot of people don't know this story. The song was already out. The song had came out. He had put an album out, but I knew the record hadn't reached the masses. So when I put my album out, I called uh, Neil Levine, because that's the label who had put it out. And I was like, I want to put this record on my album. And he was like, well, if you can get him to sign the first right of refusal to give me another album, whatever, whatever, and I'll do it. And we, we worked it all out, and, and, put, and I got a chance to put it on the album. This is how I knew that song was big, because Mike Epps was running it uptown, as he does on a guest spot sometimes. He running it, don't grab the mic. He said, my cousin's going to tell me, get his the ice cube. He said, I ain't about to get his the ice cube. He said, I put it in. Take that shit to trial, bitch. Yeah. Take that shit. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> died laughing because you had already fired the song up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, they but died that, that's laughing. That's one of Cam New's favorite songs. Man, Cam Newton always talk about that song. Cam is so hard, bro. He just cussing the police out for like yeah. an hour or something. <laughs> <laughs> he was he was always crazy. He was, I mean, he was from the streets. Yeah, he from Maysville. Rest Hill. in peace. Right? God Maysville. bless. Yeah, he too. passed away. Mm. What song do you think you played at six o'clock that had probably the biggest resonating effect on Atlanta? There's a lot of them. my boo was one of them. Really? Ooh. Yeah. Boy, my boo. Time, boo. Who is yeah. the vocalist on that? She don't get her, her name credit. Is Virgo. Virgo. Shout out to Virgo. Man. We actually Virgo, we actually man. think about remaking that song. Uh, my boo, um, my Virgo from uh, Young Jock is going down. Mm. Oh boy, Pastor yeah. Troy no more playing GA. Oh, boy. oh, oh yeah, hold on, hold on, yeah. hold on. Hold on. Oh, I actually no, that went in the crazy. studio with Gene and told Gene when he first when they first let me hear the song, like, bro, y'all gotta take them gunshots out. He had gunshots out. <laughs> <up laughs> he never heard Dirty Bird. No, no, no. no. Yeah. come on. I was raised yeah. in church. Gunshot. Gunshot. Not so loud on the record, they it, it hits the compressor and makes the song go down. If you ever heard oh, the real okay. song, like bro, we gotta fix this. <laughs> I took him in the studio, like nah, bro, you gotta do this like this. <laughs> that ain't gonna yeah. work. No, but that's a real thirty-eight. Man. That's real. Like, really shot by Mike, my nigga. They didn't know thirty-eight clapping like nah, that. Hit, was you there? Was, did you? Were you around when Master P like when it heard it was the whole debacle with Master P came and all this other shit? I think there was another. That was a birthday bash though, wasn't it? No, nah, they was in Nashville. Ah. Uh. It was, it was at a, we was doing, what was the convention used to be in Nashville? We was in the convention, and P came in the club, because <laughs> he knew Pastor Troy was there. Him and C. Murder came in the club, and Troy went down the fire escape. <laughs> <laughs> Smart, live, get Smart. out of there. Get, get out, out of there. 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 That nigga had the belt in the helmet. Right. God damn, these, these niggas. <laughs> this nigga's name is C. <laughs> Murder. Right, these niggas are soldiers. <laughs> without limits. With no limits. <laughs> <laughs> soldiers without limits. <laughs> Yeah, hey, I'm hey, 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 Hey man, <laughs> hey man, you gonna let me open up for you on the comedy tour? Ah, shit, man, I'm just fucking around. I told my little partner can do anything. We already told him, hey man, we can we can uh, uh, rock, rock the baby to sleep, go to the club, be up in the morning for the rally, knock your girl off <laughs> for the rally, <laughs> go to the studio, not for the march. Yeah, no, I know what you're talking go about. The the march go to the studio, that's hilarious. Go to the studio, basically knock your girl off all in the same time. Everybody can't do all that. You got to put that in the comedy routine. <laughs> Look. You a real comedian now, niggas telling you a joke. Yeah, no, yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, oh, but, oh, brother, do anything. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. So, Is he so. gone? He went out. He, he went out. Took it off speaker. Oh. And they gonna stretch. Then they gonna stretch. Chill. Clifford. Chill. Chill. We catch you. We catch you. Chill. Chill. I got some crazy tip stories. Nigga, I'm sure. I got some crazy tip stories. Yeah, y'all can't hear me, Chris. No, he dropped out, nigga. Yeah, man. Got, yeah, man. I'm just enjoying myself, man. You know, it's a real freedom. See, I realize now what the problem been all this time. Why people kept on getting the wrong impression and, and misunderstanding my words. Because the music 
figured out, hey man, these comedians out here getting 500 to a million a show. They ain't got no DJs. They ain't got no crew on stage. They just go sit out the arena, right. get the bag, and then get back on the private No gym. DJ, no grips. Man, no I, need to go, I need to come with you, because that is the antithesis of what I have discovered. <laughs> 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 not the antithesis. He's going to be our union president. Right. You're riding around with oh, man. Oh, oh, hold on, Tip. They got me They got me in telling all these crazy stories. Give, give them one of your, uh, your best or craziest Greg Street stories. Oh shit, that goddamn bounce story. That bounce story when we brought Puff there and he got scared. What? <laughs> I mean, I ain't saying like bitch up scared. He was just looking like, nigga, are we really prone to be here? Right. Like, the bouncer make you feel really? like that. Hell yeah. Yeah, nigga, we're good. Come on. <laughs> That's hilarious. All the way down. But like, we had everybody on yeah. back here. Yeah, we walk, we walk, we walk Puff right through the middle of the crowd and everything, right on stage. Yeah, and I wasn't nobody. I was just, I hadn't even put a song out. I don't think I might have had never scared that. Tim, 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 Shawty got out there on Buffett's on the south side. What's her name? Kelly Kelly Kells. Kelly Kells. Yeah, she Kelly Kells got out there. That's where I'm going. Yes, sir. You got a Thursday night for you? Shit, where is that? On the east side. I was thinking, man, I was thinking I was going to get the fuck on up out of here on Thursday. Head back out to L.A., man. You know what I'm saying? They still, hey, I still got a few rooms to get there and light on fire. They, 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 be, they be there every Thursday. Yeah, yeah. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> they got to come kill me. They got to pull it up. I got that smoke over there and you pay them for you, buddy. I'm, I'm not going, going back either. That nigga sound like Puffy. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going back to the bounce. <laughs> nah, yeah, the spot to make you, shit, make you never want to come I'm back. Go out there, man. Fuck around a little bit, man, on the wet coat. For sure. Hey, hell yeah, man. hey man, appreciate you what you get you get the light to the comedians, man. We appreciate you, bro. You get niggas jobs and more shit. So we appreciate you, bro. Thanks. Hey, yeah, you know what? Look, I came in here, man, you know, because I'm working on my last album, you know, have around on stage, that shit ain't age appropriate no more. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Your knees hurt. <laughs> Gotta slow it down. <laughs> Give it to the money. The come, on, come, on, come, come on, come on, come on, now, Tip. Come on, somebody. Call hey, Maurice. Guess what? Hey, hey, Tip, Tip. And lady words. You ready right, for the blueprint? I'm listening. What, what do they call you to what? The king? Yeah. So you, 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 you need to bring back the kings of comedy. Ooh. That's who got the money. That's the, what I'm about. The king of comedy. Hey, them boys were getting a million dollars this show. <laughs> Boy, was, All three or four of them. They was. They was. I'm gonna tell, tell, tell y'all this crazy story. Check this out, Tip. The Kings of Comedy was in Jackson, Mississippi. Steve and his girl was going through some shit, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> me and Steve, me and Steve <laughs> go back to the Mobile Alabama day when they used to drive around doing comedy for yeah, twenty five hours. I, I was okay. the first person to give Steve Harvey a thousand dollars. No what? shit. Oh shit! Exclusive. Hey, now check. Hold, now hold on. I'm finna tell you, Tip. Check it out. So they was in Jackson, Mississippi. Kings of Comedy sold out. Steve go to Walter Latham and say, hey, look, man, I got to go home, man. The last flight out of Jackson, like 7 o'clock. I ain't going to be able to perform tonight. He said, listen, you going to get your ass on that stage. <laughs> <laughs> and when you get off stage, I'm going to have a private jet to take you wherever you want to go. Come on, Ooh, man. Yeah, money, money. Yeah, they had to have another talk. But they were making a million dollars a show. Yeah, Everybody yeah. on the show. Not dividing a million. Right, like Everybody was getting a million a night. Come on, that's what well, you can tip. You the one that can bring it back. Bring it back, Tim. Bring it back down. <laughs> Come on, King. Oh, you are, bo- you listen, you ball ahead of the game. Two two fifty. Fifty. You jump, you jump. 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 You
Yeah, there you go, smart man, smart guy. Hey, you said these hoes ain't worth my per D. I'm gonna cuss you out if I hear somebody gave you two fifty dollars. Right. Last factory gonna make you that twenty five dollar check. Come on, motherfucker, hell, I'm for this job. Hey, hey, cuz, hey, chill, hey, chill, hey, chill. You know, man, hey, we got the two fifty, this hot two fifty. That was the weak budget they tried to get you to. Oh, and the was everybody, but the hoes ain't getting nothing. That was for everybody. The hoes ain't getting up your money. <laughs> this nigga did Wembley before. What the fuck? Shit in the circuit. <laughs> hey, we 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 gonna talk. I ain't show tomorrow. I ain't say that, man. What y'all doing when y'all get out of there? Hey, man, we, we might... coming to see. Where you gonna be at? I'm not gonna make it. I'm not gonna make it. Check your address. I might pull up on my way home. Yeah, it's far. I'm a, we go. We gonna see what you're doing tomorrow, nigga. We on Peter Street right now. It don't matter. We gonna fuck around and. Uh, Must be two sides. We gonna go to Playroom tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a damn show. I'm a damn show being project tomorrow, though. Text me. Text me the address. Right here on Peter Street. It's right, right here. I'm gonna right. have K Doug text me. All right. All right, Tip. Goddamn street. We yes, had sir. the legends on the legends on the culture That's program. Right. So legends, legends. Hold on, hold on. You gave Steve oh, yeah. Harvey his first thousand dollars. He'll tell you that. To talk about We were in a meeting. We, I had never heard him tell the story. So Steve uh Steve posted a video smoking acid cigars. Smoking who? Acid cigars. Acid? That's a brand. That's, That's a brand. not cigars. Oh, I was about to say, whoa. That nigga was on <laughs> one. The woo-woo one, he's so funny. That's what left his box. That's why. Like, <laughs> you done you seen, seen it before, the, the cigar box with the dude with the little motorcycle? Yeah, no. actually, I have. Yeah, so 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 Rich Steve nigga. posted a video talking about that was his favorite cigar, how much he liked it. Okay. So Jonathan Drew owns Drew Estate, which also owns um, Acid Cigars. So if you ever smoke, like, Legal Provider, the Uzi Cigars, the Kentucky Cure Fire, all those cigars are up on the Drew Estate. So, oh, nice. Steve, so Jonathan called my boy Stacy, who run, who helped him run the company, and uh, Stacy's a good friend of mine. So he's like, man, Steve posted the video. Go look at the video. Jonathan want to meet with him. So we flew and had a meeting, and we was in the meeting. We flew to Apollo. Everybody met in New York. We went to Apollo. Went in the trailer. Steve was like, hey man, listen, this is my guy. He's the first person that ever paid me a thousand dollars to do anything. So whatever he say, whatever he want to do. I know wow. it's, it's going to be real because he don't ever call me about nothing like this. Mm-hmm. And uh, let's do it. Damn, call him, yeah, call him back right I got to give you a props because yeah. you was one of the first people <laughs> we, hey, we ever need it, we my need it, we, I'm sorry. We need to mix it. Call him back right quick. You got a good Kodak. You got a good Kodak, <laughs> man. This nigga, Greg Street, I used to be, I'd be wearing my shirt. He'd be like, nigga, where my shirt at? I want the fat jump, man. Fuck that. Like, he, he'd be like, come here. You, come here, nigga. I need, like, I need that shirt. <laughs> He's like, fuck all that. Where that at, nigga? Yeah. He was like, put it in my mailbox. And then he sent me a picture. It's him and Travis Scott pre goddamn rodeo. Travis Scott on, got on so much silver. Yeah, <laughs> oh, the sent to the yeah group that's chat. Travis Scott when he was on Grand Run Hustle. He was on Grand Hustle. Yeah. He's still on Grand Hustle. Yeah. Damn, yeah. no shit. Yeah, Tip talking over to like the, the beginning of the rodeo. Now nah, Tip get the chip. Yeah, <laughs> Tip get the chip. Yeah. That's why that nigga just doing on. comedy out here in these streets. Hey. Hey. L.A. Reed talked about L.A. Reed talked that's about that in the he talked about that in the in the podcast. Like if Jason Jeter talked to him into signing Travis Scott. Wow. Shout out to JG. He wasn't gonna fuck with He didn't get it. He I understand. Can see that. He got his own following, man. That trap can't get that little jeans. Well, yeah. you can't. How, was, how, how could he you project? He probably still don't get it. He get the checks, though. <laughs> I get a check. I don't get the <laughs> shit. I don't get, I get the check. I need to be his denim <laughs> jeans. Do you think, think he can come back yeah, from this do. all this this concert debacle? Because yeah. it's like, how can you pr- like? He didn't want them people to get hurt or get. Hey, man, Michael Jackson had people joint with Rihanna. It's over. Yeah, they just trying. They trying to. Well, you know, the way the media put stuff out there. It'll put it out there so much that you will start believing in what they're telling you. Right. You got to think. You know, people not paying attention to the real facts. First of all, when you're on stage and them lights in your face, you really and can't see, see everything going right. on. So right. you got to think, this man ain't want nobody to get killed at his show. Of course not. Yeah. But this is the crazy part that people not thinking about. What was the show? It was in Houston. Houston. Where in Houston? Astroworld. At his it was Astroworld. Park. Who was the promoter of the concert? Live Nation. So you yeah. know, between Asher World and Live Nation, they probably got more insurance than State Farm, mm-hmm. Geico, the out. General, and everything combined. So yeah, it's they like they don't need their name on the, on that though. Bro, on, I can't do news. a college like, show without. That's insurance. why it's Travis Scott instead of Live Nation. My bad. A Live Nation concert yeah. had a issue. It was a Travis Scott right, concert issue. Had right. issue. But but best believe. If the right lawyers are involved, they know what's going on. Oh, they, 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 yeah, they, yeah. they, they sign a waiver when they, you come to the concert. Isn't it like a release? Damn near, like it's a it's a big ass sign. And 
Don't you re- buy the ticket? Don't you re- waiver? You know, not your life away. Yeah, don't say like it. It might say no. If I die, don't die. You don't sign your life away. If I die in this comedy show tonight, you want to join this? Not live. It's like going on one of those sling shots. They sign this. You go shoot your ass down. Not a sling. But let me ask you this question: If you're doing a comedy show, right, and I'm in the show. And a beam fall out the ceiling and not hit me in the head and kill me and knock me out. Are you responsible for that? No. Nope. I, I, I probably would rip it though. Whoever was at home. I probably I made the beam fall. I w- I'm probably going in. <laughs> <laughs> but I think Travis Scott's biggest asset is he got a billionaire baby mama. Come on, man. So he probably gonna be alright. <laughs> yeah, don't be out. Don't be straight. Uh, Real and they buying them shoes, bro. They buying the shit out of them goddamn shoes. Yeah, when did you see the hype turn? Because like it used to be. I remember, like, motherfuckers started sleeping outside of Wish and stuff like that. But I remember, like, hunting East Bays and goddamn, you got to pull up at a Hibbert or goddamn foot action out of town. Or, like, you they dry. still got them. But I'm just saying, like, the, the sneaker culture ain't even black people no more. It's white kids and Asian oh, kids. Yeah. And the white kids go to Hibbert's in them mm-hmm. small towns you're talking about, and they got to deal with the manager. That's how they get all the shoes to be able to resell. Because mm-hmm. in a lot of them cities, the shoes not going to sell through. So if I'm, if I'm managing the store... 60, 75 miles in Tennessee or Alabama, and I don't have a clientele to sell this product, and this one kid gonna come in here and buy everything, I'm gonna I sell give him a deal, to yeah. get myself yeah, to But yeah. what about the chick, the lady, the president of Nike, her son was goddamn whamming yeah, everybody. She knew about hey, that. Shit. <laughs> he was goddamn fucking them that. folks. She, oh, right. like she, she taking she pictures knew. every day, just 47 Travis Scott. How but, he see, get Nike, the but, but see, Nike, the way Nike's set up, it's, it's like, it's it's, it's, it's a jugs situation. Period. They don't own Period. no factories. What? They don't own none of the factories. All they fact, all these shoes is made. That's why you see so many variants of the shoes. Yeah. Because, like, a lot of them fakes don't be fakes. It mm-hmm. just be they didn't come, you know, people that work in the factory that's oh. making the shoes. You know what I'm saying? They don't own. That's why he could never stop bathing eight with the Air Force One because, like, Nico owned his own machines. Mm-hmm. He bought his own machine, so they can't say nothing to him. Man. That's why I never bought them bread 11s because all of them looked like Jordan was naked. I don't give a fuck if you was in, <laughs> if you was in foot on. action or nothing. Booty. I was like, where are the pants? Like, what the, the fuck, shot. bro? He had a booty crack. I'm like, in the, I'm in the mall. I'm like, they got fake. Hey, remember? And then look, shortly after well, that. On the running had, Jordan version, he had pants on. <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> but then shortly after that, they did have that big bus and a lot of, lot of like foot actions and foot lockers and all that shit was having fake shit in their store. Like, they just got it over on them, like you said, because they're not coming from from the same place. Yeah, because oh, if you go overseas, they sell that shit in the mall. They sell Man, the fake we shit in the Japan. They was like, yeah, y'all want mall. Jordan? They got <laughs> 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 in, 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 in a lot of countries, there's no copyright the laws. laws are different, there's, yeah. no co- there's no copyright mm-hmm. laws. Mm-hmm. So, you know what I'm saying? That's, I why they, the fa- that's why the factories are able to reproduce the shit. Have you ever bought any fakes? Yeah. Okay. Cool. I done bought a couple. Got, I done got jugged a couple times. Damn. A dude tried to jug me one time for some Eminem 4s, and I contested it, and they gave me my money back. And I never just, he, he was like, oh, you think you slick? Like, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. you think you slick? You crunk this bullshit up. Yeah, but yeah. I knew they was probably fake if they was $1,500. If you selling for $1,000 oh, yeah. yeah, and the shoes selling for $20,000, <laughs> I just wanted to see. Yeah. Because <laughs> I, Unde- I know I'm protected. The yeah. undefeated Eminem for. You got my interest? Yeah. You got my interest. If you had a Greg Street shoe, which I'm pr- pretty sure you got eight different variants of different shoes, what would be couple. your new shoe? What would be your new shoe? My new shoe? Um... I'm thinking about doing a Diodora this year, or, or I want to do a um, Adidas Hamburg, mm. or um, there's a few Jordans that would be cool that you could do something with. But they do so much with that; it's like it don't. You do some dope with a Jordan; it look like some you some fake you bought at the barbershop. <laughs> yeah, so, I hate that, bro. Hey, look, them barbershop I, colorways be some, some Jordan be colorways some irritate me. Some sometimes. of them be going crazy. Yeah, catch some cold ones. But <laughs> but, that, but it just it just. <laughs> But they didn't got so <laughs> they didn't got so crazy with it because the regular re, people that really don't know, understand how the sneaker game work, mm-hmm. they buy a lot of stuff just to be buying it, and they don't understand like the shoes that's really gonna be worth the money. You gotta have the eye first. You gotta know the inspiration behind the shoe, and then, then the ones that really go crazy is the ones that are like friends or family, or like limited releases, like an undefeated four. Yeah. They only made you know thirty forty pair, or M and M four, where they only made twenty five pair. Or you know a shoe like that, like the Cali, the Cali, uh, we the best threes. Yeah, the red ones is the first ones though. But well, it got I up got to thousands. I was out. I was like, you know what? <laughs> but those <laughs> shoes, no blues, though, but right? those shoes when you catch them, they normally be free, like the PlayStation Air Force Ones, mm. and those type of shoes. They normally, if you know somebody, they don't really be, they never really be for sale. They'll get for sale like if somebody know they got them, and they'll be like, okay, 
you mess around and let a, a reseller get three or four pair, and then that's when all the bullshit crank up. But normally, like, I ain't pay for my Eminem Fours, my real ones. I ain't pay a lot of the real shoes, like my first Kanye's, I ain't pay for them. Like, a lot of that stuff that, that that's really, Kanye gave them to you, probably. You got the October. <laughs> Kanye <laughs> had them to got you. The October. I, did, I didn't get the October. You know, he had left. They released the October's on a Saturday. My they just put one. it on it, on Twitter. It wasn't even Instagram. Mm-hmm. They put a they put a tweet out that them red, uh, uh, they didn't even say they was Yeezys. I forgot what they said they were. They put them on Twitter. They put the tweet out, and they sold out in a few minutes. That's my favorite. So most of the people that's got them. Yeah, they had them. But I like I like the tan was better than the red Octobers. I like the first year. I like the tan. Was that was crazy. it. The red Octobers. Well, the red Octobers is a two, right? Yeah, they're a two. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're a two. The, two. Fir- the first was like the tan with the big, yens. They was bigger. The they was like a, a, old goddamn Turquoise Charles Barkley or some shit. It looked like, yeah, like a little greenish. I like when he. I like his Louis Vuitton sneakers. Like he he don't miss with shoes a lot of times. Like them Louis mm-hmm. was hard. That yeah, was crazy. <laughs> you didn't miss a few times as far as I was. I, yeah, I didn't, yeah, I didn't wear the new Yeezys. I don't wear the snakeskin looking shits. I don't wear the, the, the amphibian looking shit, though. And they got the know. Metaverse shoes he's trying to put out. <laughs> the <here>. Metaverse shoes. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, Bitcoin 11. Bitcoin 11. <laughs> <laughs> Bitcoin 11. <laughs> going crazy. Oh, no, going too crazy. How you remember finding trans niggas? He told, <laughs> he told us you played this stuff first, man. He had a record that I remixed that do not do, does anybody love anymore. Mm. And um, I put Raheem Devon on it. Mm. Hold on, hold on. So you put right here. He, he said down. that. Translate said that. God, did, did he say that? He said it on the podcast. I missed podcast. that whole right shit, and I know right the down. nigga. <laughs> and I know the nigga. And God he put damn. you on. Right. Right. Cool. I sent him to send the song, told him what I was doing. He, kn- he knocked it right out. So why have, has any label offered you like? Uh, have, have you ever run any label like head of A and R or president of any label? Nah. You don't want to do that shit. Not really. He got. I told him once you. I like. He got all of them. <laughs> send Ronnie that so we can send it to Dot. Oh, them autograph. I'm gonna sell them for about a half a million. Man, what? Half you, that's that's million. your Bitcoin. That's NFTPS. Whatever that, that is. NFT <laughs> worthy right there. NFTPS. Oh, what about this famous sneaker house you got? I heard you got a whole house. It's just for your sneakers. I don't know if it's another is property it on now. Because uh, I remember you was pulling them out Airbnb, on something you, and you, you pulled out them New Balance. That you, was your own edition. You, you can Airbnb. You can Airbnb them now. You can go over there and stay. You shoes in there? Yeah. And like you got a whole look bunch at of shoes. shoes. You know like, I be taking pictures. Nah, of that yeah, yeah. hella <laughs> videos. Like, come on, Fat Joe. What's up, nigga? Yeah, right. nigga that licking your shoe. You know it's a nigga in your Airbnb no, licking no. your shoe. <laughs> I told Fat Joe, y'all lick the bottom. I yeah. mean, lick the tongue. Don't lick the bottom. Yeah, that's bro. Nasty. Where did that come from? Licking the bottom. Fat Joe. New York. Fat Joe made it up. Fat Joe crunked that up. Mm-hmm. He was bro, like, these ain't never been worn. Yeah, it was a flex on it because he was when everybody was on white Air Force One lows. He was like, nigga, y'all want whites? Yeah, you can't find them. It was like. F I want that shit. I hate it. I hate that the dude like young kids will make something hotter and then you can't find it. It'll piss you off because it's like your favorite shit anyway. But Air Force One's always been like that. You remember? I, I remember. I remember. In, I remember. Like it was a time. It was a time when I was like, I guess, like ninety six, ninety seven, ninety eight. I started wearing Jordans. I was. Just, I started wearing New Balance. Mm-hmm. It, it got. You, yeah. If you remember back in the day. You went to South, South the Cab and Greenbrier was the biggest f- footlockers in the country. Right. A Damn. little white kid named Dale, he used to sell me my Jordans at Springdale Mall in Mobile. He became a big manager in Atlanta. So when I came to Atlanta, I used to go to the store and see him. But it's like he was telling me about how I was going in Atlanta. Like all the guys from the streets, they were coming in and buy cases of Air Force One. Let mm-hmm. me get a side, a case, case side elevens for me. Let me get a case of this side for my girl mm-hmm. and this for my son. They would buy cases of them. Case? Probably, probably about a twelve, a dozen, probably at least a dozen. I, I blew a lot of money at first. When it, I got my first, it big might be check, more than I a came dozen. Back, I was in South Lake every day. Like, let me get out there two more whites and a black. Out there. Let me get like eight white tea. I just walk out the store like for no reason on a Tuesday. I was like, yeah, they were buying about the cases. Yeah, yeah. wow. I started wearing new about nine ninety sevens. Mm. <laughs> I hate what they do in the dunks because I remember yeah. buying dunks when they were sixty five dollars. I remember, yeah. and it was yeah. near and dear to my heart because they're a comfortable fat dude shoe. It's a comfortable ass shoe. When I first started collecting heavy was like in oh five oh six, and that's all I was buying was dunks. Like SB I would stay up on the line all night buying dunks. like a lot of those shoes that we bought. I remember when um when all the hype died, when all the hype went crazy about the pigeons. I bought a pair for like two thousand dollars, and they were like, "Boy, you crazy? I wouldn't pay no two grand for them shoes." Damn. Man, them shoes worth like seventy five thousand right now. Sheesh. Right now, mm. so you do the wave. You do they was gonna be the Fabergé. Well, I got, I got, culture. I got SB dunks before they was called SBs. Before, yeah, they used to call them Pro Bs, and Pro they was in the orange and orange and brown box like the regular Nikes. So what's the most somebody ever offered you for a pair of your shoes? 
I saw one pair of um, I had two undefeated fours. I saw with the, with the end case. I saw one pair to a dude in a foreign country for like eighty five hundred. Mm. That's right. That's like the only and, shoe. I, and, and I wish I wouldn't have sold it because that shoe right now worth crazy. like four thirty five forty grand. Mm -hmm. it's, you know, and it's worth nine hundred thousand. How much you for them? Green with the undefeated. The undefeated is green. The M M blue. Okay, but it's that dark green. Color. It's that dark green. It's got the, 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 uh, the jump man off the tongue, and it's got Nike. Air. I see the nigga with some of them on. I was like, come on. The dog. pair I saw, them the pair I used to wear. <laughs> All right, so if you crease your goddamn <laughs> shoes, why is that frowned upon? Like, you got to wear that motherfucker. How you walk without creasing your shoes? I mean, they're just people who don't really understand. You know what I'm saying? They're just being a little extra. So they still will buy it if you got to crease Yeah. Because okay. if you know how to do it, you know how to get the crease out. If you want, really want the crease out, you can get the crease out. Some school, some shoes look better worn protected. to me. I like, I like a good pair of beaters. What's your favorite pair of like beater sneakers that you don't give a fuck like what they look like? Mm, like a Jordan Three, a New Balance fifteen hundred, uh, Converse, Puma. Pumas look good. Beat some up. dunks. Some dunks look good yeah. beat up. Yep. Yeah. Um, it just depends. Like how you gonna wear it and what you gonna wear it with. Everything ain't don't supposed to be looking fresh and clean. Mm. You know, you look monkey sometimes. You come out. Come on, like, yeah. come on man. And what would really be crazy, and I never really got into it. But like you on release date, you just go to the club and everybody got the same shoes. Same man. night. I'm like, boy, y'all look crazy here. Shout out to Bubba Dub. He said they got them cool, them Jordan great. He said y'all equip them great Jordan, goddamn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, y'all cool. niggas had wore them cool grays out. Bro, well, that's just funny as hell. That's why I wanted to have to make sure I got them early because I knew niggas was gonna run them. But man. my nephew uh, went to take him for his birthday to get some shoes. Went to this little. Little shop outlet, not an outlet, but boutique type of spot, and they had all the shoes in there, and they had the great uh, the red Elevens. I was like, "You want them?" He's like, "Nah, all the kids gonna have them at my school, and ain't none of them even black." <laughs> <laughs> he the only black kid at the school. He like, "All these crackers gonna have all these shits, and I do not want to have them." Uh, dude, and that was the day I found out how much dunks cost. That same day, Digga, dunks he said, "Let me get these." Honey. I said, "These?" <laughs> no, no, dunks is like two fifty, three hundred. I bought him three hundred twenty dollar pair. Of, uh, Low cut, Which mom. ones? They, the uh, USC, um, the uh, burgundy, burgundy and gold. gold. For they three fifty, I thought they was about a hundred ten. Mm -hmm. You got to catch them when you catch them. I mean, they all got different, you know. They highs or lows? Lows. I ain't, I ain't bought none of the, the new ones like with the new, the whole little new wave. Mm -hmm. the, they call them SpongeBob. You got the SpongeBob shits? Mm -hmm. oh, okay, yeah. Like I think after them came out. The dunks really got on some other shit with the kids and how much they were starting to cost. I remember them SpongeBob shits came out. Everybody was going crazy. I got a homeboy, Dre. You ever been to uh, Project Blitz in LA? No. The store is not, you, you had to make an appointment to go? No, uh, I'm definitely not uh, a tax bracket for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you you got to go, you gotta go to Project Blitz. Yeah. I got to go. I have got myself. I have weaned myself off of sneakers. Yeah, man. Yeah, I mean, me. me trying to buy some property. I, yeah. Man, <laughs> Drake, 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 Drake from Project Blitz. Back when the dunks went crazy the first time, he went to an outlet store in California and bought like twenty five pair of Paris dunks mm -hmm. for like one for like one twenty a piece. Mm -hmm. And he sold back way back then. He sold every pair of them shoes for no less than like three thousand dollars. But one pair of them shoes right now is worth like seventy five thousand. Mm -hmm. Real he estate. had he had like a Real he had a bunch of them. He has a, he, if you ever go to one of his pages, he got a picture of them. We had them all laid out on the floor. Mm. That's what the cool shit Damn. about sneakers. You gotta have the foresight to know these. Right. Was, this is the most. I, ain't gonna lie. I got I got some off whites. I'm gonna hold on to man. I'm gonna keep them in mint because ain't no telling how that's gonna go. You know, after Virgil. Virgil, yeah. Did you Sheesh. get the Virgil Abloh uh, Louis Louis sneakers? Nah. You gonna get them? I don't know. I ain't oh, gonna jump out the window. Starting fire. But my boy, my boy, um, my boy Ryan, he the one that do the Southern's be auction. He sold them first Yeezys. Because we supposed to actually sell our shoes together. I'm gonna send you the video when he's talking about it. And uh, he went, he he took them shoes, he took them shoes to Sotheby and sold them for 1.8 million. Can you excuse me. Which, which ones what he sold? Shoes is these? The, the, there was the black sample that he wore to the um, to the Grammys. And you want to do real estate. And you want to do real estate. <laughs> this nigga here. Right here. If you want to buy a house. This nigga want to get a house. You want to cut grass. Talk about, talk about uh, This nigga want to live in tomorrow. Hold on. I got a question real quick, though. Real quick, real quick. So the, uh, damn, I don't forgot. Oh, the BMF days. Mm. Mm. Talk about the club. Ooh. And the BMF I was, days. The BMF days, like, 
When it really crunk up, that was during the time when I had left and went to Dallas. Nah, that was I got, I got one crazy story. This is hard. Niggas are mad. Why would they actually leave, nigga? You don't see them niggas They start to bring dinosaurs in the club. But I mean, I knew Juice. For sure, yeah. I knew Juice real good because she was like, you know, messing with Jeezy, messing around in the music business before Jeezy. Just She was a real entrepreneur. But um, we was in Jazzy T's one night. Jazzy T's. On a Sunday. First trip and like I would fly, I would fly back to Dallas on set on Monday morning. Mm -hmm. So we in, we in Jazz T's on that Sunday night. It's getting like it's like ten minutes before closing time. So me and DJ Funky, we in the DJ booth, and the manager comes up in the booth and say, "Look, everybody, tell, get on the mic and tell everybody leave. Everybody leave. What? Everybody get out. Everybody get out." So as we going, everybody going out. It's like, no, you can stay like I'm finna go. I gotta catch a flight in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm walking out. Everybody walking out. We walking out, and you get outside. It wasn't number. Ford, 3,500, Dooley trucks, Ferraris, Lamborghinis, everywhere. They was coming in the club. Mm, had to make everybody leave first. Yeah, and, they had, and, they, <laughs> and they had Ja Rule with them. Wow. So that morning, I'm getting up to go catch that first flight to Dallas. I got the radio on. Ja Rule walking the radio station. Hey, man, we just left the club, man. We just, we, I was in the club last night with, with, with Big Meats and them, man. We just, I'm like, damn. Why y'all crazy? Damn. Just they put your name on the Jackie list. Tees. Yeah. Ja Rule just put his name on the list on the radio. <laughs> He didn't even know that shit. <laughs> Jazzy T yeah, used to close at me. six. Ding. The <laughs> list. So this night. The buzzer goes off. Yeah, man. Right. So talk about yeah, discovering uh, nap, nappy roots, though. Like, that was like mm. a. It's going to be a good thing. Yeah, that's your, that was your uh, artist, right? That was my song. Actually, what happened was um, I knew Nappy Roots because we was on both. We was on Atlantic, 6 o'clock, volume one. Mm. Came out on Atlantic. And um, Mike Karen, who also signed me, he signed Nappy Roots after he signed me. And, um. We was just helping them get their records and stuff going, so we had already knew each other. But back in the same time, during the days when I ate the brownies, <laughs> the brownie days. Hold on, Scales what? used to come oh, yeah, to the studio all the time to try to get Polo to listen to their music. You know, Polo, he had the whole Carrie Hilson thing going on. He was doing Pussycat Dolls and Nelly Furtado and all that Polo stuff, Rich Boy. Going he was crazy. doing all that stuff, so he yeah. wasn't really paying attention to it. So one night, I took the tape and just listened to it. So I'm, I'm in the car, I put the tape, put the cassette, I'm listening to it. And the Good Day song came on. Mm. I'm like, bro, who's, what y'all gonna do with this song? So, long story short, I got the song. I, I ended. Up, I did a deal. With, I was already on Interscope. I did a deal, and we put the record out. And um, when they put their album out, they really only had the rights to put out on the album. They didn't, didn't have single rights to it, but uh, and no digital rights. So we, I gave. I think I gave them like sixty thousand, mm. and then they ended up getting a deal with Fontana, but was also distributed through Universal. And uh, Universal gave him some money for for, for doing their project. I ain't gonna Man. hold you up because that song so. be on commercials now. So yeah, that song yeah. be everywhere. <laughs> That's yeah, all the, all the biggest movies, all the biggest TV commercials, mm -hmm. and all the biggest TV shows. Almost that song from from like probably oh oh eight oh seven oh eight mm -hmm. from Secret Life of Pets to uh, Neighbors. I think Neighbors was the first one. Wow. Child Life Murders. Every year that song was on the Child, Child Life, Life, Life Murders. Murders. But look, if, have a good day. Day. if you listen to the <laughs> chorus, it ain't nobody <laughs> gonna die today. <laughs> <laughs> but so you still get publishing from that. That's you still get a check. They, from they that. get most of the publishing and stuff from it. Oh, yeah. I get the ro I get royalties from it. Come on now. You got everywhere. You everywhere. You're talking about real. You, you told us about like three, <laughs> four businesses right now. <laughs> so when did you get into fishing, man? Like, you be on. You be I going hard on the fishing. I was in there before I got into music. Before I started DJing. That's childhood. Oh, yeah, Mississippi shit. Hattiesburg, nigga. You know what I mean? Gotta it look fun. Yourself. You like uh, <laughs> uh, bass, brim, catfish? You go. Ba I mean, you be bass fishing mostly. So y'all throwing the back room. Most of them. Big mouth bass, yeah. boy. You, you put some white, some mustard on one of them motherfuckers yeah. before. <laughs> Not mustard. <laughs> Best Fish Fry Friday. <laughs> Best strip right, club right. in Atlanta. Ooh. Ooh. The Best strip club in Atlanta? Sir. Right now. I'm, I'm always say like Blue Flame and Magic City because they our clubs. You know what I'm saying? A lot of these clubs, they they ain't somebody else's name. True that. Wow. You know what I'm saying? But Blue Flame and Magic is like Black. somebody hit me the other day when the little incident happened. Like, what y'all gonna do about the flame? Because you know they, the other little spot was it local Luna. Yeah. They put them out yeah. like no. Yeah. Mike K, Mike and Jack and them own the roof. That was their daddy building. Yeah, you can't put them out. They you can't put them out. They own the building. Yeah. 
I was inside one. I went. They let me inside a blue flame one time when somebody had just got shot in the parking lot. Like they still was letting niggas in. <laughs> My nigga, excuse me, bro. God damn, buddy, got don't your excuse me. Don't, don't want them Hellcats backfire. <laughs> nah, right, a nigga right, was right. stretched. <laughs> a nigga was damn sure stretched. He got stretched by security, so I guess it was the whole thing. But like, you probably remember that shit. They had shot a dude's car up and all kind of shit because he had shot at the security. Oh yeah, yeah. Blue flame it was years bro, ago, we, man. No, no, no. Nah, I was, that was back when I was with Nikki. She was doing like the Wednesday nights. Okay, and we, just, we went in that motherfucker. I was like, yeah, yeah don't look over there. Just go. Don't, <laughs> don't look, look over, there. over there. I was like, nigga, I am not looking nowhere. What the fuck you talking about? <laughs> but like, it's, it seems like over the years, you always connected to comedy, though. Some kind of way you connected to comedy. I remember you happened to little the dude from Instagram on your show. Uh, he was doing the uh, little kid voice. Oh, little, yeah, uh, from, from Alabama. Yeah, he was like, you had him on everything. Run, boy. Yeah, he was doing a little. And when Ron, I found out he was from Mobile, I was like, you know. Yeah, he was on the cartoon. Yeah, the ride. I really. remember Ron, boy. Yeah. That was funny. Yeah, man. But like, how you always connected to comedy because you, you hit me randomly. I think I was doing sweet or something. He said, "Nigga, you said them nigga be rapping at forty. I said, "Where you, where, where you at? You in the club?" He's like, "No, I'm in the station." Yeah. Hey, bro, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. <laughs> Ronnie Jordan and Gerald Kelly on Friday nights at Sweet Lounge going crazy. Hands down, the greatest. <laughs> I'm sitting there listening to me and cue the record going off. I'm like, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm about to make this joke. Let me record this. Oh, Let me record man. it down the line so I can play this back later. Yeah, no, that's crazy. <laughs> Shout out to everybody dope. who got a 40 year old homeboy rapping, goddamn. This <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Keep on going, man. Yeah, you just starting to the rap. It's just like, I'm finna rap now. I'm yeah. coming back that out. But you, know, but you know what they think? They think because somebody else is 40, they're still rapping, but they started, they blew up when they was younger. You. Just trying to get mm. on. They legacy that. acts now. They you like trying to get started at forty. Now when my EP come out, y'all don't be talking <laughs> shit. Like, you know. Don't y'all be talking shit about me now. Let that shit. Yeah. Yeah. Do my play that shit street. Fuck don't play. You ain't gotta play EP that shit. Play that bitch by nine. What EP stand for? What what? Yeah. Oh, when I put out my song. No, I say what does EP stand for? I don't for? know. <laughs> Is it don't like, ask me. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I just know it's what, for us. Like remember? when niggas put out some songs, <laughs> you'd be like, "Yeah, fuck with my EP." <laughs> Everybody know that. It used to be mixtape. Everybody know that. <laughs> do you remember? Did you ever hang out with Jermaine Dupri and Janet when they was running around the city? Because they was everywhere, and it was like dope mm. to see. Oh yeah, I remember. Well, I remember. Uh, Chris what was it? Chris Rock said, "Man." I woke up one day, they talking about Jermaine Dupree got Janet Jackson. Like, I felt like Bentley's was on sale yesterday, and I didn't get one. <laughs> and I ain't get, get one. Uh, <laughs> but you got to understand, Janet Jackson is <laughs> the number one. Jermaine Dupree, Atlanta nigga, he a cool nigga, man. Like, hey, Penny, Penny for good time. But, you, let me tell you, good but, time, but see, I'm going to tell you something, though, which y'all got to understand. When You, you got to go outside of Atlanta. Like when like the world is so much bigger than 285, and a lot of people that live here don't even really understand Man, the crazy, dynamic bro. of that situation. No, but check it out. Let me tell you, in New York and LA, Jermaine is huge. Yeah, he's an icon. Yeah, we but, don't treat but, him but right. But in Atlanta, people don't, don't really treat him, treat him, him right. like we that. Don't treat him right. Like the whole little vegan ice cream thing. That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, that is amazing. I mean, the fact that Outkast was big in Dallas first is. We, yeah, man, up we, right. Come on, man. We we don't do right sometimes. We we we, we support up. everything. We, we support right. Niggas couldn't wait to say "Must be two side Tia Fe." They Tia Fe. Must be two side. <laughs> like, leave him alone. <laughs> they right. were going. They can't wait for your downfall. Yeah, they was like, yeah. they build you up just to do that. Hey man, they start killing them now. You blow up now. Hey, we gonna kill you in the hood. I mean, but like, here. I mean, you have seen some of the most prolific, potentially potential people. Pass away like from this hip hop shit, Crazy. like from Dobie, you know what I'm saying? Dobie, like, uh, 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 three, Tupac, um, so many people. I mean, a lot of people that ain't really that famous, right? You know but they saying? had to come talk to you. Like, at people one time. don't realize, like, Cuddy Cartel passed away, yeah. I mean, Ooh. there wasn't no violent, no violent stuff, but it's like, yeah, that's you just don't like, I, I don't think, like, the whole little, the, the whole little, um, I guess, times that we've been through. In, in this whole little, I guess, pre-millennial situation, mm -hmm. like, we, we, we really put a lot of people in a crazy situation. Mm. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's just a manifestation of what didn't happen the way it was supposed to happen. Like, people be talking about these kids and the way they rap and they shooting and killing. It's like... Same thing. It's our fault. <laughs> yeah, we raised yeah, it. Yeah, we started. I mean, shit, we they started. mama is in goddamn, uh, they on, she on fucking Camp Creek right now at the U-Bar. <laughs> Riding the, the bull. On the bull. <laughs> U-Bar. But, but uh, uh, Crazy Bone said in one interview that they had a meeting, 
and they told him to push the gangster agenda. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't niggas, who is they? I don't really think that because let me tell you something. I'm gonna tell you why I think that's a stretch, and it could be true. Mm-hmm. But I'm gonna tell you something. They don't even have to do that. Social media. I'm gonna let you read something. Social media. I, mm-hmm. I made this the other day, so you won't think it's just it's something crazy. Social media is really gonna keep us in slavery forever. Mm-hmm. Because when you look at how it so. works. Put a positive post on your page. Nothing. And put somebody shooting and fighting. Mm-hmm. And put some I seen you was doing head. that like a kind of like a social experiment on your page. Yeah, so when you when you look at it, it's like they don't have to tell us to do that. That's what we like anyway. Mm-hmm. Right. So like if I'm gonna make money off of it, of course. <laughs> hey, I'm gonna give y'all what y'all want. Hell yeah. Read that. Oh, shit. Read it out loud, right? Oh, <laughs> as long as we keep that nigga act like he was in class again. He said, "Ah, oh, shit, <laughs> damn." All right, it's my paragraph. God, as long damn. as we keep. God, damn. Hey, can I read? Y'all got some names on y'all. I got some words. Y'all got some names. Shout out your man. Shout out your man. You know, we, we we read uh, teleprompters on box. <laughs> nah, we straight. You know, I know, nigga. Uh, as long as we keep strolling go. past. Was that strolling? Yeah, strolling. Stro- no, he's laughing at what I said. Okay. Yeah. Scrolling. Scrolling out there. Scrolling. Scrolling past like positive posts, but like, comment, and follow as violent uh, killing cap. We will continue to be our to be our slave master. Social media is the new plantation. Mm. I said what I s- been saying. This right. goddamn sign. He signed this motherfucker. You know how nigga retweeted. Yes, sir. He signed it. Grand Street said it. Hell yeah. <laughs> I can see that. That's it. I, mean, right. I can know, see that. You got think. You saw the shirt I sent you. That's the whole thing behind the shirt. You don't need a million followers to make a million dollars. So, mm-hmm. baby, if you look good, you got to look. People like you. Find your product to sell. Because yeah, if, 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 if you got five, ten thousand followers, you can make a million dollars. Give them a shirt. Well, I try, bro. Most millionaires who haven't exposed their business to the world, mm-hmm. they don't have no followers. They make a million locally. Yeah. Make a million locally in your city. Like Atlanta's so big, you could if you got a product to sell and it's going off, you can fucking make it. You can make a million dollars with no followers. You got ten say you got ten thousand followers, you sell five hundred to a thousand people something every month for a hundred dollars. GD you, had, right you now, got a million followers, fire. you can't even supply the demand you're gonna create. Right. Mm. You ain't got enough mm. you ain't even got enough manpower. No enough money. Speaking of merch, man, bless the F yeah, yeah, bless that sure. and the special coming out. Yeah, yeah, Come my, on, my, my, my comedy Talk special, my one that. hour special finally drops, man. Uh, yeah. Epic shout to Epics and uh, Eric Abrams and Brian Baldinger tonight. To, no, fe- okay, we are gonna air it <laughs> February eleventh, man. February eleventh tonight, midnight. <laughs> yes, midnight. I, I fucked up. And it's gonna be on okay. what network? Let me do it again. All right. <laughs> Take two. <laughs> Take two. <laughs> Drop roll, please. Right. That's the commercial. Drop roll, please. My epic specials drops tonight, man. Yeah. Drops tonight. Yeah. Midnight. Midnight. Midnight on Epics, man. Shout out. It's called. It's like a docu series. They, they call it. It's produced by Wanda Sykes. Called. Very nice. Unprote- unprotect- unprotected sets. Let's uh, get it. Season three, season two. Black Ron was on there. Clayton English was on there. Yeah. Leonard Newt's oh, been on there. But they was giving people thirty minute sets before, but this year they they, they stepped it up to an hour. Let's oh, go! Dang. They called me eight days before. Like you got an hour? I was like, nigga, yeah, man, I have an hour. Man. one. You how many you need? Right, right. Y'all got them diabetic <laughs> socks? <or not? laughs> Give me them sugar socks, man. Give them sugar hey, socks. You said you said it's called unprotected what? <laughs> unprotected sets. It's on Epics, the same network as Godfather Harlem. I was at the chick house the other night. She had to have some protection. I pulled my mask out. <laughs> <laughs> Greg, so you know you don't be going so over no cheese house. Greg, Greg, I'm going on stage. Where you going to continue? Hey, man, that stop going it? over, girl. Hold on, man. I got to say this. Stop going over women's houses, man. That's dangerous as fuck. Yeah, you, you work too much, Greg. <laughs> Hell yeah. You the first Bentley I've seen owned by a black person. Man, I know. You You could get you a You could get you a, a, a driver that could blindfold a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's for sure. Got me locked up with some of them rappers. Nah, I'm just saying blindfold on the way to the house, and she ain't got to know where you like how to get there. <laughs> she gonna know where you they live. They gonna know how to get there. She gonna know you live. The she police know gonna know how to get there. She gonna drop a pen, bro. She gonna drop a pen to herself. Man, for sure. You ain't got a come up on. Is that a, is that a <laughs> so you get love. Is it, is it anybody that don't fuck with Greg Street? Because you get love everywhere, bro. Ooh, it's the like Greg Street the, hate. Is it it ain't, ain't no Greg Street, Street hate. They ain't play a song at the club when they be like doing like that, hey, bro. Play my shit. Do you remember anybody being in the background and then it became the man? Like, do you remember anybody walking in with somebody else sitting there? I'm sure you remember Future was in the background. Me hate. It's a lot of people. Yeah. Tupac was. Hold on. Digital, Digital Underground. Underground. He's oh, a yeah, background yeah. dancer for real. Oh, There's a lot of them. Brody. Um, Shit, Jermaine Dupree. Yeah, yeah, Jermaine was a dancer. Young dancer Bird. Did. Yeah, Bird. Hitmaker. Hit Hitmaker. He was in the little group. Nick um, said Puffy. <laughs> he was dancing. <laughs> what Puffy was doing when you met him? Yeah, Puffy was actually, he had just got his job being A&R at Uptown. Wow. Okay. 
So that was uh, Jodeci. Buffy kind of invented the sauce. Like he, like that R and B goddamn with the with the rap beats on the thing. That shit is. I yeah. still listen to Mary J. Blige today. Like that a, old it, shit. Like what's the four one one? I was listening to that shit the other day. Like it has a little more soulful twist to the New Jack Swing era. It, yes, right. it's yeah. a cleaner polish. It's a better. Yeah. It's, it makes your ears happy. Right. You know? like, what, I don't know. Then it's not singing. But you got to think. But see, Teddy Riley them went. Teddy Riley them went through the era when they was making original music. They didn't really do a lot of sampling because that was during the time when the samples they was trying to rob people. Yeah. And then Puffy, Puffy, when Puffy and Jermaine them came along, they started back sampling and just. Was willing to go ahead and pay it's for like it. Pay the new old sound. Right. Yeah. Is there, is there anybody that you uh, missed the opportunity to like sign? It, like the Gucci was like, yo man, like. I used to rock with Gucci. I, I, um, used to what? I used to rock with Gucci. Oh, Gucci. I, I thought you said rob no. with Gucci. I say, nigga, wow, like, like, this is gonna be four hours. hours. Boulder Crest Greg. Boulder Greg. Boulder Greg. Boulder Greg Street. Yeah, Cave Man, you still owe me a check because he put out the. Uh, I I, had, I was the only person with a copy of the first Gucci Man album, and I gave it to wow. K Man. He, he re-released it oh, when man. he started working with Gucci Man doing the mixtapes and stuff. Wow! Yeah, K Man, come on. No, it, 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 yeah, it was way before. This was like '97, '98. Run us them royalties, bro. '97 Gucci. Yeah, wow. Before Trap House, before So Ice and all that. That nigga was in high he school, one. <laughs> yeah, he had an album. He had an album out in like '97, '98. <laughs> hey, Gucci got a good book too, bro. Great book. I'm halfway through that mm-hmm. bitch. That shit pretty good. Great book. But like, do you does it make you proud to see that the influence that Atlanta has on like the world? Because it's like I go anywhere and they like you from Atlanta. But you gotta think though. See, <laughs> Atlanta is the only city in America where like black people really had a chance to do what they had to do. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like when you when, when I first I, I had never been to Atlanta until I moved here to work at V13. Oh wow! So when you get out, but when you get off the plane, if you're not from Atlanta. When you get off the plane, if you're from New York, you're from L.A., Texas, Miami, any other city in the country, when you get off the plane in Atlanta, you know you're in Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? Black people got the airport on lock. It's the closest you know thing to Africa, people. goddamn. <laughs> black, <laughs> it's like, black people like, is this Atlanta? Atlanta? <laughs> yeah, you, you, black people you doing so much. American music when you, you, know what a, you got soul a, food restaurants in the airport. And as a person that grew up that, that is from Atlanta, when you leave Atlanta for the first time, you realize how different that shit is. Yeah, you like, like where are right. the black people? Like yeah. you can you can go days in Atlanta without seeing no white people, depending on where you at. When I used to drive to Atlanta a lot, I was like, I don't, I stopped seeing white people in cars in Gwinnett. Like after you leave Gwinnett, you look over, ain't no more white people in no more cars. <laughs> I don't know the fuck the niggas that came from South Carolina with me. <laughs> That's what Atlanta kind of messed me up when I started traveling for colleges. Though I went to Vermont one time, and it was like I, I had seen black people for like a week, and I was like, oh wow, getting antsy. Yeah, yeah, like, like, antsy yeah I was ashy. ashy, yeah. ashy the then they put me in one of the hotels spoiled. that was like the in and out, the in and out. You could walk in, mm-hmm. and then I walked in there, and it was an old lady. Just she was about ninety eight years old, and she had like half her hair shaved off, and she was like. And I was like, yeah, I'm not staying here. <laughs> I called the person school. Yeah, I'm at, the, I'm, at, I'm at the street at the Days Inn. <laughs> My phone didn't work. They had the nigga at the lodge. She was in a rocking right. chair. She was like, oh, Ooh, hell no. Nah. A white lady. Oh, hell, An old white lady, man. She, she might have been 20, goddamn. She, she looked like <laughs> 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 she might have been 20. Yeah. <laughs> she might have been 20. She would look 98, goddamn. When that meth kick in, I don't know. That meth go crazy. Yeah, man. But shit, we appreciate you for pulling up, man, because. You know, we don't, we don't see you in the streets like that on the podcast tip. You know what I mean? Cause Dropping them gym. So do you have a podcast? Yeah, I'm, getting, I'm getting ready to get it all started. I did a couple episodes. Oh. I put the L.A. Reed one out. and um, the, it, my, my podcast is called Business is a Talent. Mm-hmm. And really yes, just trying to get people to understand, like, it's so much other stuff going on in whatever game you want to be in besides being the person out front. You know what I'm saying? That's why I did the one with L.A. Reed. Like, he went from growing up in Cincinnati, Ohio, starting to deal – all the way to 300. You know, future, he went through outcast, mm-hmm. everything. That's hard. Yeah, man. Shit. That's real. That's real as fuck. Got Damn, I was going to ask you one more time. All. Yeah, one more time. I'm still looking for things you guys. Huh? I'm still looking for my shit. So, uh, uh, if y'all had another question. For are you still doing um, your sneaker? Yeah, we're bringing it back this year. That's April, what I was about to ask April 16th is coming back. Can we get comedy there? That's what I brought you. Yeah, here. We, yeah, we was talking about what I you. brought you here for. I came to corner you. Well, this is what I told. <laughs> this is what this, this, what, I, this oh, what I told yeah. Ronnie when he first started talking about. Well, that shit legendary. Though. I want to get. Uh, I'm gonna show Tyler something. I just ripped these two tonight. Yeah, he wants 
Yeah. He gonna do some smoker. He wanna do some smoker. Y'all want y'all to do some promos for it. Oh, we on. Voice over for some puppets. Come on, man. You know I used to get paid. Now y'all gonna do the voice over for the puppets. Y'all just gonna do y'all thing. Oh, no, I used to get paid for that for the fire me street. Oh yeah. You probably don't like you you like not having to come to work. But what? You know, I'd be going to sleep at the time I had to be at work. No, man. This, this was a series I did for, uh, I think, 2010. That should remind me of the uh, the Penny Hardaway commercial. Yeah, Lil Penny. I remember all these commercials. Niggas forgot Kobe and LeBron had commercials together. Come on, man. Kobe and LeBron. Nike commercial was the best back Nike commercials, that shit. (laughs) Sneaker friends. We had a few of them. Yes, sir. Walters is like an Atlanta staple. That's why I remember getting my you first pair name. Hey, Walters crazy. For comedy. Oh. Are we gonna do it? We gonna do the whole little comedian roll up? Bam, can we do? Is. Can we do it in a comedy environment? But like, it's the sneaker friends presents. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because those those goddamn sneaker big meetups. It's a testosterone. It's a dude fest sometimes. Yeah, it's, it's, it's hard. To but now it's it. different. Like women are you know, all through the sneaker culture. Like, but women yeah. crazy. Yeah. It's like going to A three C. Like trying to do comedy there was the roughest shit I ever did yeah. in my life. Trying to but do comedy th- in a room full of independent rappers with book bags. <laughs> <laughs> like, y'all the saddest people I ever met. In my life. <laughs> y'all niggas all want to get, want the mic bad as hell. As, <laughs> as hell. <laughs> hey, you rap right quick? Like, the women that be at them sneaker joints still got a dick in the car though, so it's like a different. Yeah. Not all of them. All of them. It's different now. Some of them. <laughs> let's you go. Think, uh, let's Instagram, go with most. Niggas need something to do on Instagram, so Instagram this ain't going to no dunk fest. Yeah, somewhere. girl, I'm finna go to dunk fest. <laughs> that shit is not happening. <laughs> dunk fest. <laughs> that shit's not happening. I'm gonna tell you, I be knowing where the hoes at, and it ain't there. <laughs> <laughs> Can you get the comment of the week. It's right here, man. The Money Bag Mafia episode, funny episode, by the way, fellas. Yeah. Great job. They was killing um, me in the comments. Daniel McNeil said, and Ronnie submitted this. is funny. I've been trying not to do the ones that hit you because I, I don't like try to hit funny you. To but me, yeah. bitch, but this is real so- funny. It said, man, Ronnie got the big mama your arm arms. <laughs> <laughs> the way you said that. Big mama your arm arms. <laughs> Put some butter on it. Give me some butter. <laughs> big mama had that bitch on the stove. Huh? Did you see what I replied to? I replied to one of them niggas. I said some long shit. This is good, though. Yeah. He said. Also, he said, "Love this show. Salute, so salute to yeah, you, man. Uh, Daniel McNeil. Appreciate you, bro. We Very funny. Me will be in. No, we're fucking not. No, yeah, we are. You're right. I'm tripping. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna be in South Carolina first. That's gone already. Right. Yeah, Mississippi, man. Jackson, Mississippi. Boom. Chuckles, Comedy House. Um, myself, Rem- Remulus Rodgers. We out there. Oh, the that night. Too. The special comes. Deion out Sanders, pull up. Hell Special yeah. comes out tonight. Come on, yeah. Oh, yeah, tonight me and Remo are in Jackson, Mississippi right now. Like, So Man. get some tickets tomorrow because you fuck around. <laughs> Thursday, Friday, Saturday, <laughs> joint Super Bowl going to be on yeah. Sunday, so we ain't going to be in that bit. You hear me? And the next day, I'm going to be hosting NAC Alive, man. I'm hosting Come the on, main, man. main show. Come on, NACA man. That nigga finna host Crack Alive. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's, why, that's how I get my work, man. I can't. Them clubs, ah, them clubs don't book me, nah, man. man. So, shit. I, them schools book me. I can't. Nah, I can't fuck complain, that. That's so. great money. Hey, yeah. Yeah. About. Real money. Yeah, yeah, appreciate yeah, it. Student activities, but student activity, bro. Cash money. Street be seeing me hustling at stages in my career. Like I see you, nigga. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he just, just called me. Yeah, he buy a couple of shirts. Yeah, 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 shirts. I nigga? appreciate you, man. You know, you, you he pumped the pump the, the merch on the radio, man. Pump the GD. I appreciate. And you that, had Goldie on the air. You had yeah, Dotnet on there way before. Dotnet was like, I'm be on the street. I just saw him online. Yeah, man. You 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 fuck with the entrepreneurs. In fact, you sent me a jacket. Yeah, I got Tom from Tom. He messed with one of my fishing partners. Oh, rich, rich, rich white dude. Yeah. Man, I'm trying to come fishing, man. What's up, man? That, get hooked in, in not. Oh, yeah, yeah. He could people. Man, Gray Street really do be promoting. Just it's the part regular of his man, life, bro. like looking out. But you like, got you got to. This, you know what this, this what people don't understand about this whole game, man. It's like if we got behind our people, like mm-hmm. we get behind Polo mm-hmm. and, Talk and, shit. and Gucci and all this other do stuff. Do that shit today. It's like, Mm-hmm. We we can never we can never get to the manufacturing level that they're at because we can't get the money to do it. But like I just said about, you don't need a whole lot of people to support your brand 
for your company to come up and be able to make money. Because mm. once you start making money, then you start getting in all them lanes with the people that do this type of manufacturing, mm -hmm. people that do this type of packaging. Come on. This person right here know how to ship. Yes, this sir. person right here know how to distribute. Oh, God. It's like, but we won't support nobody enough. To never get to that but, level. But, but, once, but once they get mm. there, we're going to start dick riding. We're going to show up. Come like, on, oh, man. yeah, that's my partner, man. You know, we went to school together. Man. I know his sister. You know what I'm saying? His auntie and my auntie were best friends right. back in the day. Like, we won't support nobody so we can have our own major companies. Like, all these companies, when you go trace the history of these companies, like, what, Louis Vuitton been around since, what, the 1800s? Mm -hmm. Gucci been around since, like, 1925? Oh, no. Like, they, these people didn't build these companies based on all the black people running around talking about, yeah, man, I was the first one with it, cuz. Y'all yeah. weren't rocking no Gucci. I was, like, bro, these folks were making stupid money. In slavery time. The, the trunks, nigga. Them the Louis trunks. Vuitton trunks. Mm -hmm. Nigga, you can't even get one and of them. Like, right. Frederick Douglass had one of these motherfuckers. <laughs> that's, what, that's what now I was looking up. He said, like, I collect Louis trunks. I said, like, what the fuck? These <laughs> niggas started making shit out of bus seat. <laughs> yeah. That's how I knew a nigga like, had real money. He said he collects Louis trunks. I said, man, let me get, let me scoot out the way. That's why you got to own yeah, yourself. That's too much. That's why you got to like, own yourself. We ain't going to support each other enough to get to that level. Because you like, and like with the kids doing all the crazy stuff they doing, that's a whole part of that. Because... Mm -hmm. We don't believe we can do it because in our community, and like that's the whole foundation of the podcast. In our community, the way we talk about each other so much, we scared to take a shot. Mm -hmm. When you was growing up, you know what I'm saying? You had the bully in school, you had the cute girls, you had the, um, the cool guys, then you had the fat girls that were cool. You, had a, <laughs> you, you always had a bunch of people, people that they used whatever they strong point was. The fat girls that was cool was a not to real real thing. Not to, not to step up to the plate. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got a girl, like, I could beat everybody's ass here, so I don't do my school work. You know what I'm saying? Wow. <laughs> I, I'm Damn, a, so, Tanisha, so it's like, so the whole thing, I don't do my so, so the whole thing is like, when you grow, when you get to be an mm -hmm. adult, it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. But then once you get to that place in your life where you feel like, okay, this shit ain't gonna work. <laughs> this ain't gonna work. Mm -hmm. because, but the whole thing is, they did that because they didn't want to step up to the plate mm -hmm. and chase their dream. And people don't want to chase their dream because they're too scared. Mm -hmm. If it don't work, the people around them are going to make fun of them. Because yep. mm -hmm. we don't have the concept of anybody that's got some money, got some real money, they got more losses than wins. Yes, sir. Because you don't have to win but one time. Because yes, when sir. you win with something that you got a passion for, you're going to win times a million. Win, right? So if I give you $100,000 right now and you go put $10,000 into 10 different investments, if you lose on eight of them, all your homeboys like, oh, he he broke it. He lost, he, he lost on it. He lost on it. They don't realize you won on he two. Got Ben got that. Shit, I, I had I had Bitcoin when it started, and mm -hmm. I had Apple, and because I lost eighty over here, y'all think I'm broke, but right. I got a hundred million off these two. Mm -hmm. We don't think like that. Only right. thing we gonna talk about is the, losses. the losses. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's why I made the whole post for the internet. It's like mm -hmm. as long as we talk about the negative and don't focus on nothing positive. Like I put a we need to read post right next to a girl shaking her head, and people don't realize why I do it. I like what you do reading lists for kids and everything. But I'm saying, like, if you look at my page, I might post something I did for some kids reading, and then the next day I might post a girl shaking her ass. She might get 100,000 views. The reading mm -hmm. post might not get 100 views. Mm -hmm. That's a fact. Nigga, we don't want to read. Right, but well, that's the flat ass books. Flat ass books. Flat -ass. <laughs> no, but, it's not, but, but you're not reading. You're looking at some kids. You're looking at me paying some kids to yeah, read. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They but, don't even right. bang that like on the kids. They're like, why right. why, why these little kids, bro? <laughs> right. With that ass mama up there. You know with that mama on there reading with that ass out. <laughs> How about that? Look, 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 look what Teacher Bay did. Teacher, Teacher Bay. Bay. Teacher Bay she was just had crazy. a baby. I've unfollowed her. <laughs> hey, no, my favorite stripper got saved. <laughs> no. I'm out the club. My, now. One of my favorite hey. porn stars. I gave like that like bitch so head. much tired money. You hear me? One of my favorite you points I had a search. So you weren't focused. I was That's not. Hilarious. That bitch went to Jesus. <laughs> Mad as hell, man. Jesus. Sweet. With your tithes, man. <laughs> she, she was paying tithes on he your trick. Really hey, <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, Tyler. She was paying she was paying your tithe money. You turned your tithe money to trick money. She was paying tithes with trick you. So you really paid your tithe. <laughs> I was oh, giving shit. a love offering. You know <laughs> but you weren't getting no love. I, I wasn't getting no love. Getting love. No love. I didn't know Twitter was the porn hub. I did not know that. No, like, Facebook right, Messenger. <laughs> I didn't know that. I don't be on Facebook. <laughs> oh, you did. That you got like, damn bro, Kanye. Am I live? <laughs> you got the, am I live? That, that sound like some hairy vagina. Yeah, that sound like that. Facebook Messenger. Them cootie cats in there. Hey, don't you show me no Facebook. Somebody just sent me one today. No, sir. They sent in that black mouth, though. I don't want to see no deaconess mess. 
Fresh <laughs> Street got an <laughs> inbox full of cootie cats. And then this, this dude will send it. Man, he'll phone send, full of cootie cats. He'll send you some girls, then he'll send, they got Reverend Al Sharpton at Newburgh. And then right after that, he got. What? 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 Look. Reverend Al Sharpton at Newburgh. Reverend Al Sharpton at Newburgh. He did that. He did that. Before that, he sent this. <sighs> But that's just ass. Twitter be having no, real porn. But you be caring about them, though. Like, I, this is one of the, my favorite porn stars. She has my knee surgery's going well. I'm like, oh. Uh oh. She's going to wear a brace in the next She year. got a slut dick on her back. <laughs> now I got to find a woman. She <laughs> hey, one of my favorite pastimes is to find the strippers. I mean, not strippers, but porn stars of the past. Ooh, oh, that's, oh, a, that's, that's a. Hey, you and know see what they're doing. Hold on. You really do that? I do that. All right, so, like, do, like, write it, like, Put something together so we can do that for Patreon. That's fucking hilarious. <laughs> Where are they now for porn stars? Oh, that's a Patreon. Baby down. Bad. Speaking of Patreon, you Patreon, know I man. Y'all tap in with our Patreon. Patreon yeah, subscribe me, 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 me. Now, man. Please subscribe, man. We got a whole lot of content that's on oh, there. Shout man. out to Key. She's in the building. Key, she put Key. that up there, man. So y'all make sure y'all tap out. Shout out to Key, the engineer, as well, on the sound. Me, me, me. So, yes, please, Patreon, Patreon. We got a lot of stuff on there that people have not seen, and you'll be the only one. Yeah, and the spot is streaming every Thursday, man. The spot is streaming. They, they got the cootie cats. Almost had a knock in That's the little midget girl. Bro, you almost had That's the little there midget girl. That's her. <laughs> Bro, that's your girl, ain't That's my girl, that's yo. That's I got bae. that video in my she phone, but it ain't on she Facebook. She over there at the VFW <laughs> <in> yeah. Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> she over there at the hey, real look, girl. I got that little video. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, man. I'm like, man, you don't get out of my inbox. She sent me a little video. Yeah, yeah. Hey, so you think Megan Good gonna be in these streets? For real? <laughs> hey, man, let's go. <laughs> Time to go, y'all. Go ahead, come yeah, on. My beat is going. I know. Because I'm trying uh, to find. Megan Good ain't going. If, if you pay me, I can't live in my truck right Megan now. Megan been good. Hey. Megan hey. be good. Hey. Megan been good. Lucky Tom. Right. right. Thank right. you, man. Appreciate you coming through, brother. Yeah, for, for real. sure, for sure. We like to end the shows with episode. <laughs> we like to end the episodes with a segment we call Secret Genius Life Coach. Give the people some words of wisdom. Get through the week. Get to the next episode. I'm Kamar Secret Genius. The words of the week. Tip of the day. Or this. <laughs> Look both ways before you cross the street. <laughs> <laughs> what you said? Everybody's so funny. Everybody is so funny. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be. They, had a, they had a real good one back when, 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 when Tip, when tip and Tiny were going through their little thing. They say, uh -oh. the tip of the day is, <laughs> Tip don't leave Tiny. <laughs> <laughs> Don't leave my little mama. <laughs> the, <laughs> the words of the day or of the week are this. Love thy neighbor, <laughs> but don't get caught. But don't get caught. <laughs> Being weird is fine. Right. Everybody got their quirks. It's a lot of weird people in the world. Being weird is fine. Just don't be a fucking but weirdo. Just don't be a weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> just don't be a fucking Thank weirdo. That's real, that's real as fuck. Weirdo, a weirdest. <laughs> <laughs> Word of the day is weirdest. <laughs> Where did this? Where did this? Where did this go? <laughs> Where did this? I'm out of here. Exactly. Where did this go? Where did this come from? Go <laughs> ahead. <laughs> Border Culture is the brand. It's the Border <laughs> Culture Show. Come on, the Secret Genius, Dream O' Rod, Tyler Chronicles, Ronnie Jordan. Special guest, the legend. Legendary. OG. Greg Street. Greg Street. 